njërë dita të gjithve dhe mirë se erdhët në një nga eventet më të bukra dhe më përzemër që Këshili Bashkëpunimit Rajonal organizon në herën bashere për shkak të punës voluminose që kemi në mbulimin dhe pasqyrimin e njërës prej agendave, por jo vetëm të historive më të bukura të rajonit tonë, asaj të turizmi. Dear ministers, dear Erion, Edashur Mirela, Draghi Ministri, dear all, welcome to this Tirana Tourism Ministerial, which bears testimony to the changing paradigm in the tourism industry. Tourism is about transformation and has the power to bring us all together. To move, to breathe, to fly, to float, to gain all while you give, to roam the roads of lands remote, to travel is to live. Danish poet and novelist Hans Christian Andersen is best known for the dozens of fairy tales he wrote. At age 25, he embarked on a trip and left instructions for the publication of his first autobiography, Should He Fail to Return Alive? And these verses are taken from that, the fairy tale of my life. Travel has existed since the beginning of time when primitive men set out, often traversing great distances, in search of game that provided the food and clothing necessary for his survival. But tourism as we know it today is distinctly a 20th century phenomenon. Today, tourism has grown significantly in both economic and social importance. It is the fastest growing economic sector of most industrialized countries over the past several, several years. It is not just about holidays and new adventures. This incredible industry, quite literally, makes the world go around. From supporting the local businesses to making up trillions of dollars of the global GDP, the importance of tourism on the economy is simply massive. In our region, the pre-pandemic life showed some positive trends. In 2019, more than 12 million people visited Western Balkans, which brought us a profit of 7.2 billion euros. Tourism made 10.2% of the region's GDP and accounted for more than 25% of exports. On uh, average, 11.4% of the total employees in the Western Balkans come from this sector, and 55% are women. But post-pandemic period of last summer shows 70% recovery in all the tourism visits, while Western Balkans regional travel shows 92% of recovery. So let me just spice it up a bit. Last year, the total number of foreign nationals who visited Albania jumped 114% year on year, receiving 5.7 million, and most of the visitors are our neighbors. As for our last Balkan barometer, the data that we are collecting right now, uh, Montenegro by 12%, Serbia by 12%, and Albania by 11% were the most visited economies by their regional counterparts. From those who have traveled within the region, tourism has the main purpose for 53% of all of those we asked. However, tourism was, and it will remain, one of the most hit sectors. Tourism, unfortunately, will be the third sector which will be affected by the war in Ukraine. The reliance on Russian tourist arrivals in some Western Balkan economies is exceptionally high. For example, Montenegro, received 15% of the foreign tourists in 2019, pre-COVID year, from Russia. And travel and tourism sector contributes to Montenegro GDP by 13%. So you can make a calculation yourself. Other economies in the Western Balkans are less reliant on the Russian inbound tourists. But still, tourism has a great potential to accelerate progress and to transform the threats into opportunities, thus making our economies uh, more managed wisely and well. The sector can generate quality jobs for an inclusive and sustainable growth, reduce poverty and offer incentives for environmental conservation, a way to help transition towards a region more inclusive, open and resilient to the crisis. During the last three years, tourism development was particularly focused on development of joint cultural routes and that's what we are doing from RCC. Western Balkans crossroads of civilizations 
Vulcan's uh, monumental trail, Illyricum trail, support to adventure, rural and tourism like the Via Dinarica route that was among those, international promotion of region's tourism potential, dissemination of small scale grants across the region's tourism sector. But again and however, there is an open question to us all. How to position Western Balkans at the world tourism map? Removing barriers is the first step. Enable free movement of people across the region. The agreement on freedom of movement with ID cards in the Western Balkans and the agreement on the freedom of movement of third party citizens within the Western Balkans are ready to be signed and they will give a new boost to tourism. Or ease the path. Humans tend to look for finding the smoothest route without obstacles and roadblocks. We are frequently asked what the roaming free Western Balkans really meant for tourism. And I'll say it's more than the value of money that we save by roaming free in the region. It's more about connectivity. People feel better creating deeper connections. Talking to a loved one on phone or video call maybe does not give the same level of happiness as one gets from hugging but it is human and among us in the region costs zero. Roaming free region is an opportunity to boost touristic offer and complement progressive tourism policies. Increase of 500% uh, of data use after the roam like at home in the region is not to be neglected. There was a political motivation to eradicate the so-called bill shop. On June 8th, so next June, Western Balkan CEO will start the process of aligning policies and regulatory practices to have the Rome like at home between Western Balkans and the EU. There was a clear market value while we embarked in the story of Rome free in the region. Business community was eager to make use of this policy. Citizens deserve this and they deserve more. That is why we have seriously and not without a cost, I have to say, embarked in having the roaming reduced regime among Western Balkans and Europe. But what else can tourism do? Promote and build a new image for our countries. A couple of years ago, RCC launched the campaign, Balkan will need it, you will love it. Promoting the best captures, gems of our small and colorful region. In less than 200,000 square, you can find breathtaking mountains, clean lake waters, stunning waterfalls, flawless beaches, and rich culinary. We are blessed to be surrounded by these beauties of the Western Balkans, but a unique investment destination needs to go hand in hand with the development of the new tourism products. To achieve the traveling trends, we need the region to think on new creative strategies of targeting the new markets. Why we at RCC put our soul to support innovative ideas on tourism coming from youth in the last two years? Because our region is empty now. Young people at 61% want to leave. And if we do not think of creative, democratic, and smart policies to keep them home, they, the innovators that are paving the way for more innovations to come, will leave our countries, will leave our societies. We launched last year Futurismo, a regional competition that invites interested startups, entrepreneurs, organizations to propose and develop innovative technological digital solutions that will have a positive effect in the future of the tourism in this region. And seven most impactful and innovative proposals were awarded last year. Embarking on very creative solutions from the last year, whose testimonials you'll see shortly, we decided to go along again this year then Futurismo will be the first thing after the summer season. Once implemented, these proposals should make positive contribution to enhancing tourism operations, promoting and marketing Western Balkans destinations, facilitating the digital transformation of the tourism sector. Tourism has a vast potential as a major catalyst for job creation and is a driving force for the economic growth development especially. And uh, uh, it comes very natural that our region depends a lot on tourism. As Pierre Bordeaux articulated, to design the future, a hold in the present is needed. In the present, the development of sustainable tourism requires the existence of an infrastructure, as well as hotel accommodation and other facilities specific to tourism. In many cases, these utilities are economically connected in the sense that in providing them for the tourism industry, those at the same time become available for the use from the local people. 
Well, changing a town, changing a country, or changing a region into a destination does not happen overnight. There is all in here in this region, beauty and pain, swirling realities that come together and contemporary as well, are apart. Flares of emotions that rise like waves, break, foam, repel, make being happy quite difficult. But right in the middle of all this, we at RCC were tempted to see the earth, day, night, space, path, dream, love, sorrow, loneliness, friendship, animosity, rebellion, survival, through the stars that are born in this Balkan chaos of ours. From Anri Sala, Biliana Djurjevic, Drian Zeneli, Flaka Haliti, Nada Aprilia, Selman Selma, Shelia Kamerich, Sokol Bechiri, and others as well, were part of the art house idea that we developed last year. Other artists from the Balkans have been and will continue to be the nexus to promote culture and tourism regionally. And now, just at the very end of this meeting, I know Western Balkans needs to work harder and faster in order to outdo itself and to become the region that completes Europe, not only joins it. I do believe, and I'm repeating myself on this, uh, that time is now to shift the narrative from when the date of joining the EU will happen to the power of transformation of our economies and our region. And I am sure and confident as well uh, that you will have a lot of ideas to share and discuss further today. So let me wish to all of you a very fruitful discussion, and I hope you will have some time as well to enjoy uh, not only the, the sunny days of, of Tirana, actually are the first ones, but as well uh, the food and the great walk in Tirana capital. Thank you very much for all of you who are here today, and now, uh, let me invite uh, the Minister of uh, Tourism and Environment of Albania, my dear friend Mirela Kumbara. Unë jam Ministri e Turizmit dhe Energjisit e Shqipëris, rëndaj do të flasë Shqip, sepse kam shumë dëshirë që ju dy tre fjallë të zemrës ti dëgjoni dhe ti mësoni dhe pasaj ti shkëmbejmi njëri tjetër. Mirë se erdhët, mirë se erdhët në Shqipëri, zakonishtë Kër filloj një fjalë prezentimi të punës, të vëndit, të temës, në skena shumë më të mëdha ndërkomtare, si që shtë rasti javë me kaluar në New York, në asamblene përgjithshme të organizuar në bashkëpunime organizatën pëtrore turizmit, përgjithsisht e filloj duke thënë Qipria është një vëndi vogël, ndodhet në veri të Greqis, ka kufi nga një ranë, Macedonin e Veriut, Kosovën, Malinezi, shmë por se Kroatia, se Serbia, për Balka, Italin, që ti vendos njerëzit dhe gjuesit publikun në hartën e Shqipëris këndodhemi. Këtu nuk kam nevoj të abëj këtë gjë. Këtu nuk kam nevoj sepse këtu jemi praktikisht si një familje ku të gjithë e njohim njëri tjetrin dhe përndaj po ju them thjesht mirë se erdhët në Tiranë. Unë e di që ju e ndjeni dhe ju vetën në shtëpinë tuaj, për nga shijet, për nga aromat, për nga klima, për nga ushqimi, por edhe sepse kemi historit për bashkët, edhe sepse vetë Shqipria është shpesh në mos gjithmonë ura ku kalojnë kulturat, ku historia ka filluar në njëri nga vëndet tona dhe ka vazhduar të tjetri. Ku traditat shpesheri kemi të për bashkëta, ku identifikohemi edhe me shenjat vogla. Ti leku që unë kam veshur, është i Gjirokastrës. Ndë ndërko, një kesha dhe kolegja ime, Tatjana, Ministre e Turizmi Serbis, më tha pak më parë, u, të duket si kur është dikuan dhe nga ne. 
sepse Balkani nuk është gjë tjetër, veç se një kryqëzim, bashketes, kulturash, fesh, me gjuhë që janë kombinuar me njëra tjetërën, dhe këto kombinime herë nuk i kemi kuptuar, herë i kemi kesh kuptuar, pra ndaj, më vjen shumë mirë që jemi në këtë sofër të organizuar, për të mbledu në tira dhe për të folur për atë të shka në fakt, na bënd të bashkohemi rrët një teme që është turizmi, i cili në thelbë ka kënajsin. Pra ndaj, falinderit me Linda, falinderit që zjodhët shtëpin tonë, që për pak orë, për pak ditë, bëhet shtëpia juaj, për të dhënë sa do pak shi e Shqipria. Shqipria nuk është destinacioni klasik, turistik, si që janë fëqinjët e saj, si që është Greqia, si që është Kroatia, Malizi, ama prej disa vitesh, Shqipria është këtyar në destinacionin që duhet zbuluar, në destinacionin e preferuar të koreshtarve, në destinacionin ku maja me të borë, është vetëm gjusë mërë e larë, nga bregdeti, i është zakonshëm dhe ingros. Ma dje, po t'i referohemi bregdeti dhe plajëve të Shqipëris, si pas të The Guardian Travel, gazeta prestigioze të fletë për udhëtimet në gjithë botën, e ka cilësuar, i ka cilësuar plajët e Shqipëris si një ndër dy zetë më të bukurit për këtë vit. Dhurat e përëndis, për dhe të rajon, për t'i promovuar, për t'i begatuar, dhe për t'i ndarë, Shqipëria e banuar nga 2.8 milion banor, priti në vitin 2019-6.4 milion turist. Dhe 5.6 milion turist të huaj në vitin 2021. Me gjitha të, sfidat e viteve të fundit në të regojnë se luftëm për një bot më të mirë nuk e fitojnë gjithmonë shifrat, por solidariteti që ndrushmëria e shëqërive, lartë pansia, dhe zhvillimi i qëndrushëm. Ka përceva ju pa qëllin shifra të viti 2020, dhe referova vetëm 2019 dhe 2021, sepse 2020-a ishte një vit që nuk matet me shifra, por ishte shëmbulli që nga të regoj se kemi nevoj në fakt dhe për reflekti, kemi nevoj dhe për të kuptuar që farë përbëjmë. Dhe ishte një vit 2020-a shumë interesant, ku turizmi i brëndshëm mori një frymë të re, një dimension të ri, eksplorojë teritore jashtë modeleve tradicionale të turizmit, i nkurajoj fermerët dhe investitorët e vegjëll të rishpikin vetë vetën, edhe duke shumë fishuar në këtë kontekst, ofertat e agroturizmit, ekoturizmit, sporte turistike, turizmi kulturor, turizmi fetar, atë kulinar, e këtu i fundit, mose lini në këto orë që jeni pa i provuar. Të gjitha si provoni do të, nuk do t'ju dali në zbitet e jetës të provoni gjithë ofertën kulinare të Shqipëris, por të pakten kjo ju jebë dëshirën se të farë është. Tre pasoja pozitive u vërtetua në vitin 2021 nga kjo reflekti. Në rrasë parë, zgjatja e sezonit turistik për te muajve të verës, në kërkim të aktiviteteve që shkojnë një ashtë sezonë. Kemi mbritur në Shqipëri në 6 muaj aktivitet turistik, duke kombinuar të gjitha ofertat dhe synojmë 12 muaj sepse potencialin e tjerë. Pasoja e dytë ishte zgjerimi i hartës turistike në zonat që nuk e kanë pas këtë vokacion, nuk e kanë pas të destinacion, ma dje asë vizitorët nuk e mendonin që mund t'i vizitoni, por asë banorët e atyre zonave nuk e mendonin që kishin një aftueshën potencial për ta transformuar, dhe për ta shfrëtzuar për këtë dek të rete ekonomis. Dhe pasoja e tret, janë fermerët, që gjithmonim shumë, kanë shëndëruar fermën e tyre në bujësin, dhe i kanë shtuar bujësis të tyre një funksion të ri, atë të turizmit një disor. Kështu kryon destinacion e treja. Sot në fakt uftimi nuk është vetëm një qëllimi kosli, pra ndryshe nga koncepti që ne kemi pasur, por shkoj me pushime, turizmi tashmë, shtronë sa pytjet më të thella, më filozofike. Për saktimi i uftimit tjesh në terma geografik, është i pamjaftushëm. Në ne uftimi nuk është tjesh geografik, është më së shumë si psikologik. Uftimi është përvoja e tjetrit, që do të thotë të ndash përvoja originale me tjetrin, të ndjesh vëndin, ta vizitosh, duke e lën pasaj vëndin të të ftoj, të të bëj pjesë të vetën, qoftë dhe për pakor, si shpo përp edhe në kuadrin e kësaj konferencë. 
vëni kemi të gjitha mundësit në vëndet tona, që vizitorë që vi, nëse cilin prej vëndeve tona, të bëhem pjesë e kësa ndësie, sepse cila është pasuria jonë, është në fakt që bëjmë vizitorët të bjen në dashuri me një vënd për të cilin vim pak, ose as pak. Njafton të vish një herë, të ndjesh, të marrësh pjesë në jetën e vëndeve, e viseve, e plajeve, e maleve në Shqipëri. Të marrësh pjesë në një nga festivalet nërkomtare si ato që për organizojnë këtë vit, si që është festivali Kala, që fillon në një qërshor, dheri në 22 qërshor, dheri fillon në një shtator për dy javë të tjera, duke kaluar nga tre javë në pes javë në festivali nërkomtar, që mbledh nga gjithë rajoni dhe nga gjithë Europa. Festivali unum tashme i famshëm, organizuar në mërë mrekullushme nga djemë shumë të talentuar të Kosovës, edhe të ndjesh të kuptosh se në fakt ndodhesh në Shqipëri. Dhe pasaj kjo ndjesh si bëjta që e fort, edhe lë aqë shumë gjurë nëse cilin prej vizitorve, sa që është një ftesë automatike për të të këtyër sërish. Ama kjo kërkon një vetëm pasion, kjo kërkon strategi. Synimi nuk është vetëm të rrisim numrin e turistve, por cilësin e tyre. Turist që qëndrojnë në shumë se tre ditë dhe që shpenzojnë. Unë besoj që vëndet tona kanë shumë nevoj për këtë turist. Turisti që qëndronë një nat dhe shpenzonë shumë pak, na kushtonë më shumë në pastrimin dhe mirëmbajtje në ambjentit që a i mund të dëmtoj. Pra ndaj në duhet turizëm cilësor, në duhet standarte, në duhet shërbina. Dhe për të garantuar stabilitet dhe qëndru shmëri, në Shqipëri kemi zhvilluar një kuadrë legislativ strategjit stimulues për të inkurajuar investimet në projektet e hoteleve me 4 dhe pesuje veçanërisht me letësit fiskale të dedikuara zero tax për infrastrukturën, zero tax nërtimi dhe uljen e të vëshës për të gjitha strukturat akomoduse nga 20% në 6%. Po kështu, agroturizmi finansohet dhe subvencionohet me paketat të dedikuara qoft nga fondet e bashkimit e Europian, si që Shqipardi, në bashkëpunim e Shqipërin, qoft nga fondet të drejt për drejta të bugjetit të shtetit. Për të parë nëherë, si vjetë pusim dhe një bonus të dedikuar për trajshgjimin kulturore, për pronarët që janë pronarët të objekteve, pasuri kulturore dhe të cilët janë të motivuar dhe kanë një projekt për të aksyër atë në bujtim. Dhe në të gjithën të, duan të kryojmë që ndrushmëri jo thjesht një sezon, por një ekonomi. Unë besoj që hapja turistike e Balkanit i jetë sens ekonomik një tregu të rritë por edhe itinerare më të gjata, edhe më të diversifikuara. Turiste do të qëndrojnë më shumë, nëse ne hapim dyrë, zemrat dhe mëndje tona, edhe i bëjmë të shëtisim nga njëri vënd në tjetër, që do mos turistët që vinë nga një tregë shumë më larkë se sa ne, se që është Azia, se që është Amerika, se që është Australia. Të da shumë mi që jemi vënde shumë të vogla për të kryuar të regjet të izoluara, për të kryuar harta të vogla turizmi të cilën do të ambajnë vizitorin për pak dit. Nëse ne i hapim, nëse ne i koordinojmë, nëse ne i promovojmë njëri tjetërin, si që promovojmë vetën, më besoni është nuk do t'jemi dhe nuk jemi konkurent, jemi plotsues. Sepse Balkan e shtëpia jone për bashkët dhe nëse ne luftojmë se cilin në vëndet tona para gjykime, nëse ne luftojmë mëndjet e mbyllura, e këtëjnë Balkanin, jo vetëm që i heqin gjithë hijet që i rëndojnë nga e kaluara, por e këthejmë në destinacionin e preferuar të turizmit të kësaj dekada. Dhe, e që nëse jemi në ditët në muajnë e Europës, në duke ledzuar ditët e fundit, rrashtë në një letër, të cilën një pasash duat në ndaj me ju, letër të 7 majt 1950, kur Ministri Jashtëm, Robert Schuman, i shkruante, Konrad Adenaueri. Europa nuk do të ndërtohet në një dit, i thot Ministri Ashtë të jetë e Europës bashkuar. Êshtë mbrëmje, zoti kancelar, qeveria franceze do të abëj publike projektin e saj dhe shpresoj shumë se qeveria gjermane do të bashkohet me ne. Dheri në atë datë, i lutem ruajni të fshetë këtë letër personale. 72 vite më pasë, Jemi mëgjes, jemi gjithë në Tiran, në Shqipëri, nuk jemi asë një sekret,
Për kundra zi, kemi vetëm dëshirën dhe planin që t'i hapim vëndet tona, t'u japim unë si qytetarve tanë të komunikojnë, të lëvizin, si që lëvizin nga një vënd në tjetërin, nga Shqipëria në Macedoninë e Veriut, nga Shqipëria në Kosovë, nga Shqipëria në Malëzi, në Serbi, në Kroaci, në Sloveni, në Bosnjë, në Cegovinë, lumen dhe zoshtë. Ky nuk është sekret, ju ludhem shpërndani ku të mundeni dhe do të shikojmë që do tjetë shumë mirë për gjithë. Kemi habitate fantastike për shpendët, ashtu duhet kemi një habitat fantastik edhe për turizmin. Unë pak më para ndoqa me vëmëndje ma i lindën kur foli për të rinë. Që të rinë të duan të lëvizin është pjesë e një cikli historik që zhvillohet prej dekadash. Që të rinë të Balkanit të kendë dëshirë të eksplorojnë të tjera teritore edhe kjo është një deja vu, është më tepër në shëqërit tona të vogla, sepse historia ose politika e ditës i kam bajtur të mbyllura. Pra ndaj, nëse ne duam që të rinë të ikin të vinë, po të mësa humbasim pasionin e në duhet strategia. Edhe vëndi më i mirë, koha me durë për të folu për të rinë, është tirana e viti 2022, që nuk është tjeshtë tirana e viti 2022, por është krye qyteti e Europian i rinis. Dhe ne kemi fatin një vetëm të kemi këtë krye qytet, vëndi i milindjes, por të kemi një kryetar bashkje, simbolin më të mirë të kësaj forse, të kësaj energjie dhe të këti krye qyteti, mi pun ti, Meri Onve Lia, i që nga më shumë të shirë të aftoj, edhe t'ju përshëndesi si i zoti i shtëpis. Falimderit gjithve. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm so delighted to see you here, and I wanted to start with a joke. There was these two Bedouin traders in um, north of Africa, in the Sahara. So they were going from one oasis to, uh, to the other with a camel caravan. And one is uh, looking at the other and he says, do you see my beautiful camel? And the other person says, what is about your camel? He says, my camel is the best camel in the world. How can this be the best camel in the world? All camels are the same. No, 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 no. My camel is special. My camel can walk 100 miles without taking a break in the Sahara. He said, oh, get out. This, this cannot be 100 miles. He said, yes. And not only that, he can survive 100 days without having any food. So it walks 100 miles in the Sahara, 100 days without food. What else can your camel do? Well, it can also survive one month without drinking water in the Sahara. He says, this is incredible. You know, how much for your camel? He says, no, I'm not going to sell my camel. Oh, come on. Everything has a price. How much for your camel? For you, because you are my friend, I says one million euros. And of course, you know, the Arab trading uh, culture. And the guy says, well, look, if you do the calculation, what you save on food, what you save on mileage, what you save in water in the Sahara, it actually adds up. And in a few years, you can make up for the amount of money. So of course, he buys the camel. And then, of course, uh, you know what happens. They meet later after a month in another oasis. The guy who purchased the camel, was, of course, furious, absolutely mad. So he sees this other uh, tradesman, and he says, you are such a jerk. You are such a cheat. You lied to me. He says, what's wrong? I said, your camel is wrong. What is wrong with my camel? He says, well, the camel that you sold me eats like a pig, drinks endlessly. I have to kick its butt every time to move up. It's not what you said it was. And the other guy says, never speak bad of your camel, because you will never be able to sell it. And the Balkans is our camel, and we know it's not perfect. But our job, my Lindas and everybody else who's called in this mission, is to sell it, to sell it. This is an imperfect camel. And no one here is touting and saying that, look, this is the most beautiful and most gorgeous. Of course there's difficulties. Of course there's challenges. Of course there's debates. Of course we still have to heal a few wounds from the past. But remember, it's our camel, and it's our job to sell it. And I think those who work in marketing and tourism understand that this is an invaluable mission to be able to sell our camel despite the flaws and the difficulties and say, this is the best we have. And it's much better than what we had before. And it will be better uh, with uh, what we will have in, um, in the future. Now, because Albanian is such a beautiful language and not uh, billions of people speak it, the chances that English will disappear are slim. Uh, so I would like to switch to Albanian. 
and make sure that in every opportunity we get a, a, a chance to preserve, um, preserve our language. Oshin, can I see a veçan që jeni sot gjithë Tirana dhe ju uroj një mirësardje shumë grotë? Jam shumë e njohës për Majlinda dhe gjithë punën që arsisia, gjithë këshilli bashkëpunimit rajonal bën. Edhe unë besoj që për shumë njërës janë cinike dhe skeptik, që me qëra fjalla janë sporte komptare balkanike, gjithë mon pytja është, ore, këto institucionet qëfar bëjnë? Qëfar bëjnë për mua? Jo qëfar bëjnë për seminarën e për konferencën, po për mua qëfar bëjnë? Edhe unë besoj që Majlinda dhe skuadra saj i është përgjigjur kësaj pytje. Kënajsia të uthuarit në muajt e fundit në vëndë ndryshme në Balkan, në në titullin e Kryqytetit Europian të Rinis dhe si përfajsu si bashkis tiranës, edhe arritja një mesajin të telefon që thot je në Balkan dhe roaming është si në shpinë të ndër, është një kënajsie veçant. Një nësie veçant edhe unë besoj që më në fund kemi arritur të lidhim gjyra që themi me gjyra që bëjmë. Pra, predikojmë gjyra që në fakt i implementojmë. Edhe majlindat përgëzoj publikisht ty dhe skuadrën, sepse kuptoj që vetëm unë mere me organizim edhe të organizosh njërës nga Balkanit të një kombi është një dramë vetë vetë. Imaginot të organizosh Balkanit si në gjithë kombet e tyre. Jo vetëm që e verit, po kompanit private që ofrojnë të shërbime dhe gjithë regulatorit e tjerë. Edhe këte vlerësoj ashtë masë, sepse janë këto letësirat e vogla që bëjnë diferencen për një njëri që shikon seminarit, konferencen dhe do të di qëfar ndodhë basë këtyre aktivitetet. Sot jam shumë i lumëtër që përveç mi keshës time të ngusht mirelës, po më lokët e saj nga gjithë vëndet e rajonit janë këtu, edhe shpresoj shumë që kjo tradit vazhdoj edhe tjetë një stafet që ne kalojmë për qidru këtë gamile në gjitha, jo vetëm treva tona, po edhe me kolegët që kemi këtu nga bashkimi Europian. Disa mësime që unë kam vënër, një qytetë si Tirana që s'ka asë vetë, po që disa gjyra ndoshta mund të kthehen në realitete edhe për vëndet e tjera me disa nga kolegët folë mbrëm. Spari, një heqë e gjithë barjerave, duke të luar nga barjerat e lëvisë, një prej barjerave ishte që është e aromingut, një barjer tjetë ishte që është e aroporti, që ne nuk e themi mjaftushëm. Tirana sot është një nga qytetet, mos qyteti më indërlidur në Balkan, me një shind e pes fluturime ditore. Për popullësin që ka, pra për banor, Tirana dhe Shqipria është pa dyshim vëndi më i lidur. Ne vetëm i talin kemi 21 destinacione në ditë, dhe shumë prej kolegve nga vëndet e rajonit vinë Tiran për të lidur me disa pjesë të Europës ku Tirana, aeroportu yënë dhe ullja e barjerave e ka bërë jashtë zakonisht të letë, mundësin për të lidur me kosto shumë të përbalushme ma dje edhe për letemi të ardurat modestet të një studentin, se bileta është 19-20 euro, hynë në ndiçka që dhe një student mund të përbaloj, se mund të keshë vërtet liberalizimin e vizave, për nëse s'ke liberalizimin e gjepit për të përbaluar, sigurisht kjo bëtë shumë e vështirë, dhe për këtë target popullësis, liberalizimi i tarifave, prishe e gjitha ture mureve që kryoni digat konkurences në aeroportin e Tiranës ka qenë absolutisht një histori suksesi. Dje kishim një takim e kolegun tonë, ministin tonë të brëndshëm, migun tonë Bledi Quqi, ne kemi vendosu që për gjithë digitalet nomad, pra të gjithë po flasim se si të zjerojmë stinën turistike, po pëse mos jetë 12 muaj, ose 24 muaj, të heqim barjerat e vizave të komisariateve, të kartave të rezidentit, dhe të bëjmë shumë të letë për dikëj që punon online, si do mos gjatë kosë pandemis, zbuluam që ishte një sektor i jashtë zakonshëm. Në fakt, rritja me madhe ekonomike e Lisbonës, apo tani e Buenos Airesit, po vjen nga anumade digital, jo dhe të rrimish nga shkëmbimi i malrave. Dhe liberalizimi gjithashtu i këtyre barjerave, si që janë vizat edhe lejet e qëndrimit edhe lejet e punës, është ditë shka që për ne ka provuar që shumë efektive. Në vitin 2019, Tirana kishtë më shumë turistë sa kishtë banorë. Për një qytet që s'ka detë dhe që nuk është, letemi një qytet klasik, nuk është Parisi, nuk është Roma, pra nuk është Athina, nuk është qytet mira vjeqarë, në fakt kërë qytet ju në është vetëm 102 vjetë, por ka lindur një loj turizmi, asaj që quët city break, pra një pushim qytetas. Kishim për para disa ditësh kryetarin e parlamentit Italis, të cilin nga që nuk e njën për parë me ndova që vinde për herët parë në Tiran, tha jo në fakt është hera ime e parë si kryetari parlamentit, por hera ime një zetë, ta shësi ka ardhur ti një zetë herë në Tiran, kam logaritur, tha me gruan, që më kushton më shtrejnë të ri në shpi, në fundjavë, se sa ti jem në Tiran. Do të thotë që në qofë se jam në Romës, në Milan, dhe me të shmimet e sot me të energjisë edhe të kostos naftës, më merë 5 jetë, 6 jetë euro të shkoj në një restorant mirë, plus shmimet të jashtë zakonisht larta për ushimin dhe për pjen, vi thot në, atë të gruas për lundur nuk e di, po, vi thot në Tiran, me 20 euro, hasin Itali, pisin Itali me një të retnet shmimi. Dhe kret për pritur zbulova unë, sekretari bashkis, që paska një komunitet të tërë, i cili 
ka bërë një kalkulim dhe në fakt të bje më lirë tjesh në Balkan në një fundjavë, zësa të rishë në shpinë të ndër, ku ke kostot tila që ndosht janë pa përbalushme për atë stil jetë që ka një pjesë madhe e shoqërisë europiane. E treta, ditë shka që kam suar, ne na duen aktivitete ankor, spiranca. Pra, kërë qyteti europiane i rinis më shumë se sa titull krenarie, pa mvarësish ne ka ndidua me 600 qytete, pas ta 100, pas ta 20, pas ta 5, pas ta 1. Novi Sadi ka qënë qyteti me i afer në rajon për pare nesh si kërë qyteti europiane i rinis, po më shumë se sa titull është sebep, është një loj spiranca kërë ti lidh të gjithë aktivitetet e tjera. Dhe inkurajimi për kolegët tonë të qyteteve ndryshme të Balkanit është për të konkuruar për njën nga këto titull, kërë qyteti rinis, kërë qyteti kulturës, kërë qyteti i qëfar do loj gjëja. Por mjaftushëm për të kryuar një sebep, një alibi, një justifikim, një mukajet, kërë i themin e në Shqipë, për të pasur arsye, për të shkuar dhe për të vizituar. Dhe vetëm titulli Tirana Kërë Qyteti Europian i Rinis ka generuar rreth një mi aktivitetet. Sot jemi në një situat ku shumë njerës nuk po gjenë do të dhoma për datën 25 majtë, ku Tirana do të presi finalen e UEF-ës Roma Feynor. Kërëtarë dhe bashkistë të Romës dhe të Rotterdamit në thonjë zapo në hynë mikë që të rinë një nga shpitona, sepse sot nuk kemi më dhoma dhe kapacitet hoteli. Kështu që kjo ishte një mesaj për gjithë miqë, po kam dhe disa mesajë për ata që janë këtu nga Tirana, ata që janë nga Tirana. Ne o do bëjmë histeri, o do bëjmë histori. Ne nuk mund bëjmë dhe histeri dhe histori. Ne nuk mund të lirasim qa janë këto kula e oligarkët e pastrimi parave, nëse s'kemi fakte, se po t'kemi pa tjetë, dhëtë shkemi prokurori. Po ja ku jemi sot, jam britëm ditës, që në Tiran nuk ka më vënd. Pra nëse ne duam t'j në këtë loj, në këtë sfit që Majlinda hapi për gjithë rajonin, dhe duhet cilimi si njërë serios. Në qovë se nga ka plonë histeria, gjelozia, smira, dhe fillojmë i bëjmë logarit tjetërit, dhe nuk kuptojmë që një hotel si kjoj madhi që pëndërtot këtu, nëse do shtrihe dhe do ishte i ullët, do zinë dhe gjithë në të reze. Nëse hoteli plaza do shtrihe dhe do ishte i ullët 4-5 kaq, do zinë dhe gjithë sheshin skëndërbej. Ajer kemi, tokë nuk kemi do në tjenë ju për këtë konferencë, duhet në tjenë media të afer, që të vinë të ambulojnë, duhet tjenë ata që kanë pun me qeverin, pun me bashkin, pun me kompanit kërësore, pun me fintekun, finansat, teknologjin, kështu që për ne që i banojmë këtu, është shumë e rëndësishme të fillojmë të cilimi si të rritur, të fillojmë të cilimi si njërës të pjekur. Si do mos të anë që janë liberalizuar vizës, si do mos të anë që kemi par bot Ata ku punojnë ata? Një hotel, kjo hotel ku jemi këtu sot, punëson duke filluar nga roja që ju priti të këdera, të këtë taksi që ishin rështur aty, të këtë zonjat që po pastronin qimenton, të këtë ata që po kryojnë higjenën banjo, të këtë hidraulikët, të këtë elektricistët, të këtë recepcionit, të guzhinat, të kamarjerët, të këtë banakjerët, të këtë gjithë infrastruktura që punon këtu. Janë vënd e punësimi dhe turizmi mbi do pranojmë që do kemi këto hotelet larta, këto hapsira që mund të akomodojnë aktivitetet ndaja dhe në një vitë si kuj, ku Tirana me satarish në ditë ka 10-12 aktivitetet tila, kërko që të bëjmë njërës serios, njërës të tokzuar që kam parë bot në sy dhe që nuk këllë rasin për këtë do tjetër. A, nëse dikush i shpenguar mundësia të zhvilloj, a i ka drejt ankor. Po përsa koj që këtë regë është liberalizuar, kush ka takatin, kush ka besimin e bankave, kush ka mundësin, kush me riskun të bëj biznes në turizëm, sigurisht do në bështetet me zero burokraci. Kështu që besoj, ka mjaftu shumë sime edhe për ne, edhe për miqët nga jashtë, edhe unë e përqafoj dhe në Mireles edhe Majlindës, bashkë në bëjmë një ofertë më të madhe. Vëndet tona janë shumë të vogla për të dedikuar një uftim të dikuj që vjen nga Azia. Të vjen dikush nga Azia vetëm për Shqiprin dhe për Malinezia për për Kosovën, nuk justifikohet kostoja. Zakonisht është një paket, edhe ne sot jemi një paket. Kur thonë anglisht, we're in this together, ne jemi këtu bashkë. Edhe fundit, si që për përmëndja më brëmë në dark, është koha për të qënë shumë mirë njohës për fëqinje tanë, edhe për të vlerësuar fëqinë si në mirë. Mund të kishim fëqinje një rusinë, që të vjenë dhe të pushtonë. Ne kemi fëqinje italinë, greqinë, dhe pa tjetër fëqinje tanë imediatë në Balkanë. Shu që shikoni atë që keni në të majtë, shikoni atë që keni në të djathë, nuk janë armiqë kauzën e kombit vetë edhe mirëqenin e popullit vetë. In the end, to conclude, this is Europe week, and symbolically we do a lot of events for Europe week. And then I got called the other day, and my team says, we are playing a football match with a delegation of the European Union. 
And I said, uh, you know, what's the point? You know, we get rejected every time. You know, no matter how much we apply to have a match, and no matter how many goals we score, the result goes to Brussels, and then some uh, referee cancels uh, cancels the match. But jokes aside, we did have and won a match with um, with the delegation. But other than uh, the jokes and sometimes, I think uh, a light-hearted way of taking our journey to the European Union, we have one conviction. We can have two choices. One is to complain and to whine why we're not in the European Union faster and who's blocking who. We know all of that. The other option is to build a little piece of Europe everywhere we're called to serve. So if my Linda is called to serve in the RCC, she's in, she's in charge of creating a little piece of the European organization where she's called to serve. And if uh, Tatiana and Mirella are called to be ministers of uh, tourism, they should create a piece of Europe where they are called to serve. And if our friend from Bosnia is called to serve in the Ministry of Economy, make the Bosnian economy as European as possible because that's where you're called to serve. And myself as mayor and so on and so forth. And once we get these little pieces of puzzle to be European, it's only a matter of time before the whole, uh, the whole picture is European. And in the end of the day, it's not a journey to Europe, it's a journey within us to become uh, European. So on that note, I want to invite a very good friend uh, of many battles and successes. Alexis Supin is the acting director or the acting uh, ambassador, uh, chief of mission of the European delegation in uh, Tirana. And I would like to welcome him on stage with a round of applause. Thank you. Good morning, ministers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be with you all today at the opening of this important event on regional of the Regional Cooperation Council. Now, after so many, after eloquent and distinguished speaker, I understand now better why no one in Brussels has volunteered to come and take the floor and why I was asked to, have to put a double hat on the hat of Brussels, but also, of course, the hat of Tirana. Let me to say immediately that surely Tirana is one of the better destinations to hold this important regional conference on tourism. Now, Ms. Bregu has started with a few figures, and I will add, in the best tradition of the European Commission, my own share of uh, figures. You would, I think, be otherwise disappointed. But nevertheless, those figures are key, because for some economies in the region, tourism represents up to one-fifth of the GDP, uh, tourism and related activity. In the case of Albania, one employment out of four derives from tourism. Now, we heard Minister Kumbaro, Minister for Tourism and Environment, I think we should add more hats to her portfolio. She is actually truly the Minister of uh, Economy and Employment as well. Now, continuing with, with Albania, but broadening to the regional perspectives, because after all, it is a regional uh, conference. In July last year, nearly half of foreign nationals coming to Albania came from Kosovo. Now, if we add the other countries of the region, well over a majority of the tourists are coming from the region. But in this context, I think Ms. Brigu was quite right to say that beyond the region, it is important to put the region onto the world tourism map. Now, the potential is there to grow even further from coastlines to snow line, culture and history to cookery, to cookery and hospitality. The possibilities are huge, but the challenges are also considerable. Now, the mayor reminded us that even if the challenges are considerable, there is no limit how, how expensive you can sell your camel. So I take your joke with me, and I will try to make good use of it. Nevertheless, hence the importance of this event to tackle those challenges. As also mentioned, the regional common market and the economic investment plan, with its focus on infrastructures, are the two legs upon which regional tourism can develop and flourish. Mention was made of the ID traveling, but also for third country national. In other words, seamless travel and transport are prerequisite uh, in this uh, respect. Now, first among these challenges to harness and the huge potential is to define the best possible tourism offer for the region. And as Ms. Kumbaro has mentioned, an offer which is not only seasonal, but a broad regional offer which links the different economy and how it fits also into your respective econo economic development plans. It can take different forms. And I hear also Ms. Bregu mentioned the importance of joint cultural routes. 
a cultural, a cultural trip, for instance, to follow a pop star from concert to concert, or a trail going from churches, mosques, or monasteries. It can involve multi-week tours, or simply an act of taking a tourist boat across a lake to cross a border to visit a village on the other side. Second is the challenge of uh, sustainability, and this is where our green agenda for the Western Balkan kicks in. The tourism sector, with its huge economic significance, will be a vital element in the implementation of the green agenda. This applies directly to the type of tourists that you seek to attract, mass market or high end, or both actually. The physical, environmental, and economic impacts of such decisions are not just fed locally, but across the region. Now, shortcomings in planning the tourism development could damage the very qualities which makes this region unique. Now, the European Union has been and will continue to be engaged with you in trying to mitigate, again, the two great external shocks that have put pressure on your, your economies and that have been mentioned, and the tourism sector in particular. First, of course, the coronavirus pandemic, and now the impact of the Putin's war of aggression against Ukraine. But again, we will always remind ourselves of the stories of the mayor to know that we can easily overcome these shortcomings in order to sell the camel. Now, a final word, as the mayor just said, we have celebrated Europe Days throughout the region. It's always a good moment to showcase your region through the social media and its potential. Here in Albania, we held a travel camp going through the country with journalists and bloggers. Now, from the valleys of Tamara in the north, just across Montenegro, to Permet, just across Greece, and not far, actually, from North Macedonia, always we saw the region dimension. And frankly, it was a no-brainer. It was simply obvious that there's no alternative to the regional dimension. Thank you, and have a good discussion. app but it's primarily intended for the Chinese visitors so thank you RCC we were able to add more destinations and now our application covers Albania Bosnia and Herzegovina North Macedonia and Kosovo to add more features for our end users and even to add to our design as we continue uh, working on our application to make it more appealing and make this journey to the Western Balkans even more pleasurable, let's drop by to China and see what our end users have to say about this amazing application. This app is a 包含了巴尔干半岛主要旅游景点城市的吃住行购物等，为您的出行提供最优方案。
it work? Oh, yes, perfect. Good morning to everybody. Now let's have a little action. No, uh, no that we didn't have before, uh, but you know, uh, I'm, uh, I would like to uh, thank, it's an honor and pleasure for me, I would like to thank Secretary General uh, Bregu for uh, inviting me and uh, the, the people from your team, Ivana and Dima and the rest of the team that were so friendly and cooperative and professional uh, during uh, uh, the work that we are going to do today and to the conference. I'm George Yalas, I'm coming from Greece. Uh, I'm Regional Director at the uh, World Travel and Tourism Council. And uh, I've been working for 30 years in the private sector in tourism and regional development, but also had a little break, a four year break, being the Secretary General in the Greek Ministry of Tourism. Uh, if you ask me, I will tell you in the break, if you ask me which uh, term I like best and for what reason, so uh, stick with me uh, afterwards. Today, it's a very uh, interesting first panel. We have four panels. panels uh, uh, it will be a great, great discussion, a great conference. And uh, we are going to discuss uh, the, how disastrous has been, it's on the one hand, the COVID, the pandemic, the period, but what we can do from now on uh, to have uh, a recovery, to have a restart, to have new development, to have new action and to, have to bring prosperity to local communities, to our economies, to the region and, of course, to Europe. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, in our first panel, and this is uh, uh, the good and bad things of the pandemic, uh, were, among others, that uh, now we have hybrid events, right? Uh, in any other, uh, before the pandemic, we used to gather, all of us, in person, and have a very interactive discussions. Now with the technology, which played a very important role, we have hybrid events. So today, uh, we will discuss in the panel, you know how much disastrous was the pandemic for tourism. We lost, according to our data in WTTC, uh, almost 4.9 trillion US dollars between 2019 uh, and 2020, and also 62 million jobs globally were lost because of the pandemic. There is a, a recovery, of course, in 2021, and we hope that we could be back in our numbers here in the region, as well as in Greece, where I'm coming from, and uh, I've been working, as I told you, for four years as State Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, and I know how hard work we've done, how hard work you've done all this period, and, but how much harder work we need to do for the next period to come back. So uh, I would like to have distinguished guests, uh, whom some of them I met here. I would like to, to invite uh, Minister Tatiana Matic from uh, Serbia, uh, whom I met only yesterday, but uh, it seems to me that we have met a long time ago. Uh, please, Minister. She is the Minister of Trade, Tourism and Telecommunication of Serbia. I think, Minister, you have quite a big portfolio and quite a big job to do with all these uh, sectors. Please, <laughs> nice to meet you okay, again. Nice. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me, it's an honor. Thank you. So, uh, please, uh, have a seat. I don't know, well, uh, you, can, you can sit. Yeah, thank yeah, yeah, you. I don't know how it's, we will, we will manage, oh, okay. okay? thank you so much. And um, also, I would like, uh, have the pleasure to um, welcome in the panel. Uh, Mrs. Alexandra Gerdavsevich Tavulica, right? Did I pronounce it well? This is, you know, my notes, is, this is only for the names because I would like to have the full names. Director General for Tourism Development Policies in the Ministry yes. of Economy and Development and for Economic Development Tourism okay. in Montenegro. Hello. Hello. Maybe you could, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, no, no, you, you can sit here. I okay. will bring my chair. Okay. okay. Um, also, and we will be having in Thank our you. panel virtually uh, Mrs. Tatiana uh, Steryova Dushkovska, Secretary General of uh, Western Balkan 6, Chamber of Investment Forum. Uh, I think we are going to have her. Good morning, nice meeting you. 
Uh, I uh, studied about your bio. I studied about. Uh, I, I heard some people talking about you. You are. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to have you in the panel. It's a, it's a pity that we don't have you with us, but I, I believe that you would uh, stay with us, <laughs> and we we'll have a very fruitful discussion. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, my friend Alessandra Priante, my friend Alessandra Priante from uh, my Italian friend from UNWTO, the World Tourism Organization, uh, from Madrid. Uh, good morning, Alessandra. Good morning. Oh, wow, you are always, you are always so uh, bright and with, uh, with a voice, a uh, very loud voice, as I, I missed you so much all these years, I mean the last couple of three years, but it's a pleasure to have you here. And Thank it's you very much, my dear. I guess the loud voice does not depend on me shouting. It depends on the microphone. Being no, out. I know that <laughs> you're... Good you're to everyone. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very good. So uh, what I, uh, I'm going to do is that um, before we start, and now I leave my notes, I, I, I will explain to you some housekeeping rules, okay? Okay. So uh, first of all, we don't have a clock, as you see. In most of the conferences, we have a clock, okay? So we don't have a clock to push... Uh, I have a clock, and uh, we have uh, 45 minutes, okay? Uh, so I will check. I will check if everything goes okay in, 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 time, uh, in terms of time. Second, we don't need to have notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, let's... Uh, and don't cheat, Alessandra and uh, uh, Tatiana, please don't cheat from your offices. Don't have notes. We're going to have an open discussion. We are going to have... Uh, also, an interactive discussion with the audience later on, and also just to share a very friendly and relaxed atmosphere. We had uh, the speeches before, the political speeches. I used to have such kind of speeches. I know uh, they are very interesting, but sometimes if they take long, it's better to have an open panel, okay? And uh, uh, what I would like to do is I would like to start, before we start, to have a little how, how would you call it, an ice-breaking exercise, uh, like um, to, to get us together. So what I, what I will do, I will ask you all in a moment, when I say go, I will ask you all in a moment to close our eyes, close your eyes, I will count one, two, three then, with your eyes closed, and just think and have a vision, what would you like tourism to be from now on? A word or an expression. You can say like uh, blue or fresh or interactive or uh, I don't know, or uh, whatever, or uh, sexy or music, just something, okay? And then we can share the words and we can go with the discussion and we'll try to make it happen. All this input that we have and at the end of the discussion we'll see how many of these words that everybody uh, visioned, everybody dreamt of, everybody imagined, would fit in what we are going to discuss. So uh, I will close my eyes. I have prepared my, wor my word, actually, so it's, not, it's a little biased. So. Okay, so when I say go, you all close your eyes, don't cheat. I cannot see, don't cheat, close your eyes. I will count one, two, three, and just think of a word. Don't change it then, okay? Okay, go, close your eyes. One, two, three. Is it okay? So you, Everybody knows, I know some people didn't, didn't close their eyes, but they didn't know the word. Okay. Uh, you I, I should, don't have to close their eyes. I should have said, Minister, that uh, nothing would have happened uh, within the three seconds. <laughs> so it was uh, absolutely safe. Okay. So can I have a couple of words or expressions from the audience? S say it loud. Interesting. Oh, quite nice. Something relaxed. relaxed. Experience, yes. Authentic. Authentic. Roots. Roots, you say roots? Okay. Okay, I will, I will keep this. Do you have a word? I do. I suppose to have a word resilient. But resilient. I but I would say happy. Happy. Instead resilient of and happy. No, you, no, you no. I suppose to say resilient, but, but I'm choosing happy. happy. Okay, without closing your eyes, Minister, what did you uh, think? Green. 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 Interesting. Interesting. And Secretary General, you have uh, a word in you? Beautiful. Because uh, I may say because you are beautiful. That's why you, 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 are, you <laughs> said that. Uh, okay, let's come back to, of course, some uh, uh, 
uh, I'm trying to, uh, to be uh, an open discussion. So let's start. Uh, we said, and I will start, uh, ladies, now it's, maybe I can do it like this so as to, to see you, because otherwise uh, I wouldn't be able to see you uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, on the screen. So I will start with you, Minister. Now, let's discuss, we had the pandemic, right? I know that we have the challenge now, as uh, uh, Secretary General Bregu said, that how to, to, to bring the six out of ten young people not to leave the region. And then those people would come and feed the camel, as the mayor said, and take care of the camel and make it more beautiful and make it uh, uh, and have buy more camels and then we have more camels and we take care of and then we we need more people to take care of the camels so we bring employment we bring young people back in the region in our countries and then give a boost to the to the tourism in the next period so i would like to share with us your uh, uh, opinion your thoughts uh, how, uh, how 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 do you think the situation would be uh, the next day. I understand that the next day is, uh, we always want the next day in tourism. We wanted it two years ago, it never happened. We wanted it last year, it seemed it happened. But then again, it was the war. It is the war. So is it going to be the next day? Is it going to be a crisis? But we need to go on. Tell me uh, your thoughts on, uh, and of course about your country, uh, what would be, what do you think it would be uh, the, the next day for the tourism in your country, in the Balkans, of course, in the yeah. Western Balkans. I think that uh, uh, the whole region, the Western Balkan uh, region uh, situation in tourism I is uh, a little bit different than in the rest of the Europe. Uh, as we heard, uh, uh, the situation in the tourism uh, during the pandemic was really hard. Of course, it, it was hard uh, also in the Western Balkan countries, but uh, during the 2020 and especially 2021, uh, we have seen uh, quite a good results in the Western Balkan countries tourism sector. And I must say that uh, uh, in the Serbian sector of tourism, 2021 year was uh, quite good. We had a mm -hmm. quite a amazing results in tourism. What I heard from my uh, dear colleague, uh, Mirella, uh, and uh, what is uh, also uh, Ms. Bregu uh, said, uh, the Western Balkan region had similar results uh, in the sector of tourism, which shows us that uh, there is so many similar things that we can work on and there is a lot of potential in this region. First of all, um, we, and I'm saying that this uh, crisis, uh, which was caused because of the pandemic, uh, shown us that we have a lot of potential uh, in the tourism. First of all, our domestic tourists helped us to overcome the crisis. And uh, uh, it was not so bad uh, for us in the region. Uh, we had domestic tourists, then the regional tourists came to our mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this helped us to overcome the crisis and showed us that we can in fact rely on each other and of course uh, we have also seen that some new uh, touristic products we can discover, we can also um, uh, work on. And uh, also our countries uh, were not so strict in uh, COVID measures. We have found the balance. So our approach uh, towards uh, the COVID measures were not so strict like uh, in uh, mm -hmm. other parts of mm -hmm. the European Union which also helped us during this pandemic regarding the tourism sector. So I must tell you that 2021 was one of our best touristic year ever when we are, uh, for example, looking in the uh, income that we had uh, uh, in the, for, 
For example, we had 1.5 billion euros inflow from uh, the touristic sector, uh, more than 2.5 uh, uh, tourists uh, coming in um, Serbia. These are all very good results uh, uh, for the touristic season in Serbia. I think that also uh, in Albania, the last year was quite good uh, regarding the touristic uh, season. So uh, comparing to some uh, traditionally great touristic countries like Spain or France or, or Germany, we really, uh, the Western Balkans uh, region was uh, dealing quite good with this uh, mm -hmm. touristic seasons uh, under COVID situation. And I think that uh, the crisis for us was uh, in fact opportunity. So we took advantage of this crisis. And I think that uh, now also having in mind that we have this terrible war in Ukraine and we are thinking how are we going to deal with this new crisis which is uh, first of all economic crisis, I think that again we should uh, think uh, about the new opportunity that we are going to see. And since we have seen that the region has uh, some familiar opportunities, that then we should unite and try to find in these similar uh, opportunities, trying to find one unique platform for cooperation in tourism so that we could together take advantage of, uh, of this, uh, let's say, touristic, uh, uh, how to say, tu touristic advantage of okay. our region. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the main goal that we should had, uh, have uh, in front of us. And I think that uh, we simply have to take uh, advantage of all that we have seen and learned uh, during the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say that uh, for us, the experience for the Western Balkans region and the countries in the Western Balkan region, the experience from the COVID in touristic sector was not, at the end, was not so bad. We had some good lessons we have learned. Domestic tourism and domestic tourists helped us a lot. Regional tourists help us a lot, and we have survived, and at the end, we had good, uh, good score. Yeah. I think this is very important, which means that at the end, we should look at each other as uh, the real partners, and we need to have uh, the unique one platform for unique touristic offer. This is our great and big opportunity. Mm -hmm. I understand and I uh, keep as an alert, it's crisis, it's an opportunity, has been an opportunity. Yes. You took advantage, and now you go on with this. And it's, uh, it's great, it means also that you've done great work, the it governments and the private sector. Yes, w the, the work was, uh, the, the great work was first uh, in, uh, in measures that we took. The, go the government first had to took uh, quick measures uh, regarding the touristic sector. First, of course, during the pandemic to help touristic sector with financing them, with helping them mm -hmm. with some uh, measures that were, you know, very, very uh, good focused to help uh, uh, the hotel sector, uh, the small uh, uh, and medium enterprises to help the people who were working uh, uh, in the touristic and hospitality sector to keep their businesses alive during the first year of the pandemic mm -hmm. when it was the hardest, uh, in fact, to, to survive. Uh, then uh, what was also very important to find the balance in the measures, not to shut down everything because of the pandemic, to, you know, uh, to watch what was happening uh, to implement the measures, but on the way to let people work in the hospitality sector, in the hotel industry, etc. And of course, the vaccination process was very important to keep it, uh, 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 to let it happen mm -hmm. quickly mm -hmm. and to allow people uh, at the same time uh, to 
work uh, and uh, to at the same time of course to have fun and to live uh, let's say nor normally no, as it was possible at that mm -hmm. time so this was very important uh, for the serbia it was very important uh, that we uh, were last year at the june at the green list of the european union so that helped us a lot with the uh, uh, foreign uh, tourists that uh, who were coming to the serbia and staying for a while so that uh, Serbia was the country uh, from which they were traveling uh, at the European countries mm -hmm. and further. And uh, at the same time also the Serbia allowed uh, vaccination for foreign citizens. So, for example, uh, you could uh, get vaccinated in Serbia with uh, Sputnik, Pfizer, uh, AstraZeneca, uh, Sinopharm, all uh, vaccines uh, were uh, available yeah. in Serbia and this was also one way uh, of uh, vaccine tourism that we uh, also okay. were provided. So, you know, we, we took a chances of, uh, of this uh, situation in yeah. so many ways and it paid off. So I'm just saying uh, on how, how uh, we were thinking about this situation. So I, I'm just saying that uh, you have to be, you know, uh, you, you have to consider all the circumstances when uh, the, the situation like with COVID happens. Now we have different kind of uh, challenges in front of us. Uh, I think that the, the biggest challenge is in fact the economic situation that uh, we will have to deal with because tourism is uh, the joy, the tourism is uh, spending money, etc. When you have the war like in uh, Ukraine, people do not feel comfortable uh, planning mm -hmm. the, the uh, traveling or uh, holidays, etc. So I think this will be more uh, m bigger, bigger challenge maybe uh, for us. But nevertheless, uh, even this terrible situation will end. I think the, for us uh, in the Western Balkans, it's the right time to start thinking and uh, to start about a unique uh, platform and to start uh, thinking uh, uh, about uniting uh, uh, in, in one, one uh, touristic offer that okay. we need. Okay. Uh, we need to uh, first of all, to work uh, on, uh, you know, uh, fighting against prejudice in our heads, fighting uh, uh, against stereotypes. Uh, we need to work on promoting our countries. We need to work on things that are similar. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, understand that uh, 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 businesses is uh, what is important for our citizens what is uh, uh, what is the most important is that tourists from Serbia uh, are coming uh, at the seaside uh, at Albania the last year mm -hmm. there are a lot of them who were coming here uh, they like it very much so I think that we need to represent uh, what is good uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Albania to represent in Serbia and uh, also what is good uh, and what uh, Serbia yeah. has to show here at and also of course in North Macedonia and Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro uh, and uh, also in all other um, uh, regions. Region. So I, I think this is uh, the moment is right. We should start uh, thinking uh, about this uh, right now. A unified platform. And yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, so do more about <coughs> the promotion and talk mm -hmm. more about the things that uh, united us. Okay, now uh, Alexandra will tell us yes. about Montenegro. Yeah. Uh, Please tell us your yeah. opinion, your thoughts, yeah. okay. uh, how, how you are dealing with this yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. post-COVID. Okay. First, Mirdita to all, and uh, thank you for having me here. I just have to give a small explanation. I'm sitting in the hot chair uh, now. But it's not hot, instead actually. Of we're not going to have... Instead of sitting in the audience, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because Minister Jurovic, uh, who's supposed to come here, uh, he couldn't make it. He has just been appointed a couple of days ago and he has to take over the cabinet and he has so many mm -hmm. bureaucratic duty, uh, duties, so that's why I'm here. But 
I'll try to do my best to, to explain you how Montenegro goes about tourism. Please. Uh, so, uh, I don't need, I'm sure, to tell you much about Montenegro because we all know how beautiful it is, so I shouldn't be emphasizing that. Um, I'm sure that uh, a lot of you have visited our country and uh, you know what I'm talking about. For those who hasn't, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure uh, you'll get a chance and uh, you'll see that I'm right uh, for, for what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Uh, when it comes to the question, how have have Montenegro been affected with COVID? Uh, I think it's a, it's, a very, it's a very tricky, kind of tricky question for us. Uh, as we know that uh, tourism makes about 25% of uh, GDP, of our GDP, then uh, it's so clear that we are too much dependent uh, on tourism. And all of us sitting here know how, how huge and uh, even threatening that uh, figure is. In uh, 2020, the year when, when the pandemic started, we really had, um, we, we didn't manage it well, just to mm -hmm. call it mm -hmm. <laughs> as it is. Uh, we didn't have good experience. Uh, we are a small country, only uh, 0.6 million people, and uh, no matter how small we are, we are a very welcoming uh, nation, but our borders, unfortunately, in 2020 were closed, mostly closed. So we didn't have COVID corridors, uh, COVID balloons. Um, we were uh, we supposed to rely on domestic market, but our market, as I have just said, is too small. And uh, instead of uh, opening toward the region, we could we, we really didn't do it uh, in a nice in a in a good way. Uh, so. Personally, for example, um, from time to time I write articles for a mainstream uh, media in uh, Montenegro. And in that period, summer 2020, I wrote an article uh, with the topic uh, 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 Season of Ghosts. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. how it looked like in uh, 2020. In 2021, the situation changed. We had a new approach to our tourism, and it was really good. Uh, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of 2021, the figures were st uh, uh, COVID the infection figures were still uh, very high, and then we thought, okay, now we are trying to control it and to make sure that we keep the tourism substance that we that we just keep it, save it, save tourism, save businesses. But then we realized because we really managed to to control COVID. And then we put in place a lot of incentives measures that the minister also mentioned. So we, we realized that it's going to work. And then we uh, had started having and creating uh, at the first quor quarter in 2021, uh, 21, mm -hmm. we started uh, creating very optimistic plans and it worked. So our tourism last year recovered at 80% comparing to 2019. And it's so good, actually, when uh, uh, other people talk about your destinations, other <laughs> authorities talk about the destination, and this is what happened to us. And uh, our friend, Alexandra Priante, who is uh, attending the, the conference and the UNWTO in March, two, two months ago, actually, they um, made an announcement uh, about three destinations which achieved the, the highest growth in uh, 2021 compared to the Excuse previous me. year. So the growth that we were number one in the list and the growth that we have uh, uh, achieved was uh, 250%, which was uh, really, oh, really great, good and great. really, really great. high. So I would uh, at this moment uh, also like to thank UNWTO for supporting us, us all the time. They also helped us uh, in creating, uh, uh, in creating, uh, a recovery plan for tourism. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we produced very good documents uh, all together with them or thanks to them. And also the document that I would like to, to uh, point out is the National Strategy of Tourism uh, up to 2025. Uh, we made it in-house. That was the first, that is the first doc document of such kind made in-house uh, us local experts okay. made it. Uh, I led the team uh, of of a uh, couple of people creating the document. And what is the most important that we involved, engaged private sector in it. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. we actually, mm -hmm. uh, the, the strategy is based on uh, private sector, mostly private sector needs and uh, on SMEs needs, because as we know, 99% of yeah, SMEs are, uh, are, <laughs> yes. Yes, are uh, engaged yes, in, in tourism industry, so we had, to, we had to focus on them. So just maybe to conclude, and mm -hmm. what is so obvious, uh, uh, as Minister Matic has said, uh, less we learned a lot of lessons from uh, COVID. And I think, uh, one uh, very important lesson, uh, lesson that, we, that we have learned is that uh, there is not a single destination who, can, who could win over COVID unless we all win. Okay. So no single, uh, single winners, no single players in this very complicated game. So I think the point is that we should definitely get all together. Western Balkan is so special. Uh, we have so so uh, many special things to offer. We also know the tourists from uh, South, uh, Central Europe, Scandinavian countries. They have uh, uh, new expectations. They are not going to come for two weeks in uh, Serbia or Albania or Bosnia, Montenegro. They want to move around. Yeah. So and definitely, we exactly. should uh, we and should promote. Yeah, we should promote our region. We should become mm -hmm. one story, one product, and we should promote yeah. it yeah. and yeah. sell you know, it yeah. as, a, as a package. In most yeah. of the conferences I've been, it's like cooperation, synergies, and uh, without cooperation, without people involvement, you cannot go on. Definitely. And now I would like to go to Tatiana, uh, um, following the order that we have in the panel, to Tatiana and tell us, please, Tatiana, could you uh, just... Uh, uh, tell us your uh, thoughts, tell us your uh, uh, insights uh, about uh, what you are doing with your role and responsibilities and what are your thoughts for the next Thank period. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, continue on uh, the topics already raised by the two panelists uh, before me. And that is to confirm that really the region has uh, very vivid stories to be told and very <coughs> beautiful places to be seen. And it is up to the tourism sector to have that stories uh, shared with the wider public. And coming from a regional institution, I strongly stand by the position that we can only do that together jointly. The six national economies all uh, combining activities and synergies and uh, involving also the private sector as one of the key uh, stakeholders and beneficiaries as well in the, in the tourism sector. So uh, coming from the private sector, I also would like to draw upon some numbers as uh, support on why tourism sector is uh, such important sector for the regional economies. And one of the reasons is that uh, it uh, can, um, be singled out as one of the sectors that has a positive trade balance, which is really important for the further development of uh, regional economies in the Western Balkan six countries. Before the pandemic, in 2019, the travel service uh, revenues amounted to 7.3 billion euros, and uh, a similar result was achieved even in the post-pandemic year, that is in 2021, reaching a level of 6.8 million euros. And what is uh, important to be singled out is that the trade balance in travel services amounted uh, to uh, 2.7 billion euros in 2021, almost 500 million euros about, above the pre-pandemic level. So this shows us how important this sector is for uh, and how big are the potentials for further developing it and making it uh, one of the key pillars of uh, the region's economies, especially bearing in mind that the gross value added amounts to 2.5% of the regional economy. So one of the premises, uh, whether we want to admit it or not, on which uh, regional uh, tourism development was conducted in the years preceding the pandemic in each of the six national economies was based on uh, two things. On one hand, 
that uh, primarily tourism is a summer oriented activity and the other is that um, each of the six um, economies are intercompetitors if we can call it like that meaning that uh, if a tourist comes to Albania or if Albanian authorities are making activities towards attracting more tourists then they should be uh, particularly devoted to Albanian field and not uh, at the same time visit uh, Serbia and Kosovo and Bosnia and all of the other countries from the region. So the pandemic uh, has showed us uh, the two lessons uh, regarding the need for diverse diversification on uh, what we offer. And um, although summer is uh, the most obvious choice for development of tourism, for uh, especially for Albania and Montenegro, which have the geographic uh, preferences for development of such tourism and have uh, the biggest number of incoming tourists uh, is precisely in, in, within the season that is from uh, June to September. Uh, it also relates to the remaining four uh, uh, countries from the region and uh, that is the need to also think actively on developing uh, active tourism but also slow tourism including walking tours, cultural tourism, uh, summer mountain tourism activities. Uh, some of the references also Minister Matic was uh, mentioning previously. So broadening the picture on what, what the reg region has to offer to anybody who uh, at the back of his, his mind has thought about any of the economies from the Western Balkans. And the other activity relates to uh, interconnecting activities and including um, a platform um, also uh, for, for um, in joining private sector representatives, government officials, and all the regional institutions that are uh, active in uh, the sector. Uh, one more issue that should be borne in mind if we want to build up the tourism sector even better after the pandemic and after the war crisis and everything that we are facing ahead of this touristic season is an issue is the issue of uh, securing workforce which will be able to uh, take over the burden of such growth and such development of the tourism sector. Uh, much more details, I believe, will be uh, discussed uh, during the next panel mm -hmm. of the conference. Mm -hmm. But uh, the very important issue is that we need to have uh, people engaged in the sector with qualified skills, with uh, sufficient uh, qualifications for them to be attractive. Because the first front line for any tourist that... Uh, comes in any of the six Western Balkans countries, the face of the tourism are the people who are working on fields. If we don't have people working on fields, and we all know the, the migration trends and uh, the situation of young population leaving the country, and the low rate of uh, language knowledge and uh, skills, even in the basic uh, needs for uh, in the tourism sector, uh, we uh, see the importance on uh, working towards securing adequate uh, representation and skilled uh, workers in the sector. Okay. It's, uh, I will come back to you uh, in a minute uh, for the second round. Now, Alessandra, Alessandra, we all know what uh, UNWTO, uh, the great work uh, that you are doing there. Please tell us your insights about uh, uh, the new, uh, how, how, how do we know, how do you uh, feel about the uh, post-COVID period, but let's, let's hear your valuable opinion and your insights. Thank you very much, George. And uh, I would really like to thank uh, Montenegro, Alexandra, the minister, for inviting me. I would like to greet uh, Her Excellency Mishinerela Kumbaro, uh, the Minister of Tourism and Environment of Albania for gathering this uh, important event. Uh, Minister, and thank you very much for attending the UN event uh, that we've done on sustainable tourism. We were really honored that you were with us. I would also like to, if you allow me, George, say hello to 
a fantastic minister, Tatiana Matic, <laughs> the Minister of Trade, Tourism and Telecommunication of Serbia. She's been with us, another great supporter of UNWTO. We are Thank really you. grateful. Thank and you, I would like to make another, another important remark here. George, you are realizing that you are making history today, thanks to Minister Mirela Kumbaro. You are hosting a panel of only women. Yes, <laughs> I wanted to say in the beginning, but I, I let the, uh, so it was you that said it, yes, and it's. Uh, Absolutely, I mean, I, we had uh, made, uh, made, I don't know if you know about it, but lady ministers, uh, ladies in general, please be aware, we are all joining a movement in which we say no women, no panel. So uh, <laughs> I think this is very important that not only our voices are heard, but we're also at the highest stage like today. Uh, Alexandra, thank you very much for your words. Uh, you are what makes our job an absolute delight because this is what UNWTO does. We're a member states driven organization. We're the smallest agency of the UN, but we live to serve you. So you allowing us to actually hold your hand in your new strategy and in uh, gathering all the data that you need for that, all the support, this is thank actually you. a gift for us. So thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you. Now, uh, George, I would like to start, start from your question. Me and you go way back. So we know each other for a long time. I did close my eyes and I did see the color blue when you asked, how do you see the future of tourism? We have never lost optimism because we firmly believe that tourism is the most resilient industry and uh, the most uh, dynamic in a sense because it can leverage on a horizontal and very large value chain. So it is a responsibility, but it is also, I think, one of the most positive factors that in order to restart tourism, you need a lot of collaboration without which you cannot do anything, whether it's national, whether it's international, you need collaboration from transport, from the private sector as a whole, from the citizens, from the larger organizations, from the supranational organization. But I think what tourism does, it still stands out as the most positive industry of the world because the way we contribute to the economy is a very inclusive, holistic, organic way that allows us to benefit all. We leave nobody behind in tourism. There's a couple of very important political topics that I would like to draw upon also, stemming from the intervention of uh, uh, Minister Matic, especially Minister Kumbaro in the beginning, uh, because now we are facing an interesting situation, which is this war, which is now very far from us, uh, with this conflict, which is definitely creates a lot of tension and it affects the possibility of communicating Europe as a safe destination and uh, the possibility of, you know, really focusing on all the strategies that we can put down because we need to take new factors into consideration. Yet tourism is probably the only industry that would allow recovery, uh, also including, for example, migrants. Uh, mm -hmm. Other countries in Europe have done it. For you, Greece has done it, Portugal has done it. Now Italy is starting to do it. And I'm sure also your countries are doing it to include, for example, the migration clause into a training route that would allow them to become part of the tourism industry. In other words, I see the future of tourism positive, but only under the condition that we don't take it for granted. Ministers, especially women ministers, have to fight double when they need to tell their prime minister, their other colleagues, that tourism is important, that you need investment, that you need political support, mm -hmm. that you need support at, for example, in the case of the EU27, at EU level, that people need to say, yes, this works, we are going to have to reinstate the Schengen area, we have to take into consideration that we need to share protocols because it's not possible that we travel from one country to the other and we have completely different rules, okay? So all this requires political as much as from the private sector coordination. Yep. And during the WTO has been saying this from the beginning. We are providing instruments. We're providing market intelligence. We're providing policy advice, guidelines, advocacy. We're positioning tourism at the highest level of all the institutions, especially in the region of Europe. Yet, we're still struggling. 
So we need to not give up fighting for people to understand that tourism works, everything else works. Because yes, tourism exactly. is the essence of everything. It includes everything. So if we make tourism works, it means that all the different pieces of the puzzle are working. And we need more women. We make up to 53% of the workforce in tourism. We have to become 70 if needed. We have to have the same salaries. We have to have the same And you have to be more and more in higher up managerial positions. This is a very crucial. Indeed, this is why I am so happy that we have this fantastic minister with us. Allow me, George, to make one small remark. And allow me to, to, uh, to use this opportunity to let everyone know that we're having our 67th Regional Commission for Europe, for the region of Europe, which includes everyone uh, in the region, in the Eurasia region, of course, in Armenia, 1st to the 3rd of June. Not only we hope to have the highest level of participation, uh, ministers that are there, Minister Kumbaro, Minister Matic, please join us in that because it will be very interesting because the highlight there will be tourism for rural development as the main topic. Okay. Because what, George, what the pandemic has taught us, because we were forced not to travel far, so our national and nearby destinations were the main point of attraction is that rural development is a true asset for tourism. I'm so, waiting for your invitation uh, also to join you in Armenia and because we are running up late and uh, still we have very interesting panels here. I will, we have three minutes for all of us. I, I just wanted to, uh, to ask each one of you just uh, for 30 seconds a statement a thought, an insight, George, what would be you next? start with me, please, because... Yes, I, yes, please, I please, Alessandra, we give Alessandra. I, you have 30 seconds. <laughs> you have 30 seconds. Right. Yeah, please, say, say your, yeah. uh, closing, uh, your closing idea, something that in inspires everyone to go on. I have one closing remark to make. We stand for sustainable tourism to become the real guiding light of the future of tourism. Thank you so much, Alessandra. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank hope you to meet you soon. For having me. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Minister, it's uh, your turn uh, for inspiration. Inspire us. Uh, regarding the future of yeah. tourism is, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. Western Balkans region, I can just say that uh, our future is indeed in lifting the barriers and that. When I said uh, the future of the tourism, when we close our eyes, is green. I mean that uh, it has to be uh, sustainable, it has to be ecological. Environment is very important uh, for the mm -hmm. tourism and uh, re resilient also. Mm -hmm. So uh, our future is common. Our future is. Uh, to be united and to lift all barriers and prejudice that existed between us. Very inspiring words for a politician, yes. for a woman politician. And as Alessandra said, I believe very much in the power of women in, uh, in top level positions in tourism. Okay. Tatiana, we, uh, you are younger, but uh, uh, I hope that you have uh, something to share with us, uh, something also inspiring and uh, you know, for the future, for the future of tourism, just say a few words before we close this panel. Thank you, thank you, George. I will also try to be as brief as possible as Alessandra. And uh, my point would be that I was born and raised in the region, as all of the panelists, we all know how beauty we have within the region. Uh, it is to join forces. Uh, it is up to us to step up to that assignment and have the world see uh, what we have to offer and to continue working on uh, how uh, to best tell our story because it is a worthy story to be told. Thank you so much for your presence. I hope we meet Thank again you. soon. And uh, Alexandra, before I visit Montenegro, yes. just tell <laughs> us something to make me feel a little bit, you know, more willing to come and visit uh, okay. Montenegro. I'll make sure that you that you spend great time there, and of course you and everybody is invited to visit Montenegro. 
So I just want to share my optimism because I really think and that uh, tourism coming back greater and stronger than, than ever. Uh, I believe in it and uh, I'm working on it. As I also said, uh, uh, none of the destination in the region can win unless the region in whole win. So my message, message would be, let's make it big. Let's make, uh, make it work. Let's, make, uh, let's promote the region uh, all together, common, make it as one uh, product, uh, as one product. Mm -hmm. and uh, the point is that we should, uh, that uh, Western Balkans should become niche market for the rest of the world. Okay, okay. So uh, I think we are uh, at the end, we just, we were very, very good at timekeeping. <laughs> uh, I would just uh, like to thank you all in the panel. Thank you, the organizers, of course. I will keep of what you said, that it's uh, diversity. It's uh, sustainability, it's cooperation and synergies, and it's also green, climate change. Uh, we haven't uh, touched the digital agenda, but we'll mm -hmm. have time yeah. for this next time, hopefully, because it's very essential. Sustainability, environmental, social sustainability, economic sustainability, and tourism is all about people. And we need to provide for people, we need to provide for young people, for young entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs, in local communities, in the regions, I know that the, our region is SMEs, small yes. businesses, small businesses, and we need to take care of them. So uh, I believe that in the coming period, tourism, yes, will be resilient, will be green, would be beautiful, would be beautiful, you would be uh, interesting, would be authentic experiences, and I would put my little, little contribution word on this, rediscovered. We need to rediscover tourism and we need to go on with this, and we need to fight with all these external barriers, lifting barriers for sustainable mm -hmm. tourism development for Western Balkans, for the Balkans, for Europe. And this would be good news in the coming years. Thank you so much. A big round of applause for the panelists. Thank you. And uh, I we hope you. we have Thank you. again meet you soon. Of course, Thank in, you. during the break and before the panels, we can discuss a lot of things more without mics. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. here as a tourist and now I'm here seeking for a second place for my complicated life. We believe that within this small area there is so much things to offer to tourists. That's why we try to make infrastructure. We try to provide as much as we can to a local uh, entrepreneurs to continue to work on the field of the cultural tourism.
nema na kroču pauzu, ali se može se ponoviti.
I'm going to start. I'm going to start, given that we are already 30 minutes behind the schedule. So whoever wants to join <laughs> is more than welcome. Um, So good afternoon to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, dear organizers, hosts, ministers, guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sanja Miovcic and I'm coming from Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I'm working as executive director of Foreign Investors Council called FIC. FIC has been established in 2006 and uh, today it has been recognized as the most prominent and important independent business association that gathers investors who uh, by now invested more than 9 billion convertible marks and employ more than 20,000 uh, BH citizens. Today I will be moderating and guiding you through panel two titled Improving Business Climate for Sustainable Investments in Tourism. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a very fruitful discussion, so uh, please allow me to introduce our distinguished guests and panelists today. Uh, with an apologize of uh, Minister of Economy of North Macedonia, Mr. Bekteshi, who, who just apologized and informed us that he will not be joining us online today. Uh, together with us uh, on stage, we have a Minister of Foreign Trade and Economic Relations, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Sasha Košarac, and Mr. Mladen Grgić, director from Montenegrin Investment Agency. Online, Mr. Zravko Ilić, senior trade expert from CEFTA, uh, will, be, will be joining us. Uh, thank you, I'm gonna start now. Um, so, men, uh, I don't know if we are waiting for Zravko to join or not. Hello, Zravko. Hello, good afternoon, Sanya, I'm here. Uh, hello, nice to, nice to e meet you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, many thanks for this opportunity, the RCC, and it is a big honor to have you all uh, as panelists in Tirana today on today's important ev event. I'm very happy that all of us managed to, to, to travel and to come here healthy and safe. Um, we're going to discuss about impacts on trends from, from your own perspectives and the need to uh, revise the policy framework supporting tourism uh, that has already been explored significantly in our region in order to, to better address environmental and social sustainability at the destination level and how tourism can better contribute to the sustainable growth agenda. Uh, this, this panel will review the state of play in tourism investments in the region and bring to the light the main issues and recommendations on improving business environment so as to attract more sustainable investments in tourism and also linking all our economies in one uh, attractive touristic destination. Uh, therefore, um, I, would, I would like to start with uh, Zdravko, with you. Uh, as one of the largest, fastest, and most consistent growth sectors in the world economy, tourism's key role in, in global economic activity, uh, including significant contributions to job creation, export revenue, and domestic value added, are well recognized in, in our region as well. In this context, tourism can play and does play an important role in improving the, the attractiveness and well-being of places but also to live, work, and invest. Given that you're coming from CEFTA, I would, I would like to, to ask you that you share your opinion and your view why uh, Western Balkan is attractive touristic uh, destination and why tourism sector is such an important uh, economy driver. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sanya. Uh, thank you for these questions. Thank you for the, the Regional Cooperation Council for inviting me. And I want to ask the regards of my director and Jikic, who unfortunately could not be here today, but I will try to help you to go there with me. Um, regarding, the, re regarding the question, I have to be quite honest with you and tell you that I learned 
most of it actually today, most of the, uh, what I will provide the answer to, to you and the audience, because all the speakers before in the introduction, they were quite uh, eloquent when talking about why tourism is important. And I think for, for, for us, also for the, for the trade experts, uh, the, the, perhaps the key word there is a driver. It's a big driver. It uh, uh, connects with it a large supply chain. It goes throughout other services, uh, the services economy, but also, but also um, goods and trade in general. Its nature is collaborative. You cannot have good tourism without unless you have good collaboration also with other sectors, but also with, uh, in this context, with, uh, uh, the, with your neighbors, with the region uh, as a whole, especially if we are talking about destinations and economies uh, and geographies which are rather small if you look at it in the, in the European perspective and the global perspective. Also, let me recycle some of the figures that that uh, people know, I guess, but uh, when, when somebody says uh, you, you, you always, uh, you, cannot, you cannot be unsurprised, let's say. Um, and this is that, for example, in Montenegro, one in four euro of, GD, uh, of GDP is created by tourism. And in Albania, that one in four jobs are created by tourism. This is what I learned uh, today from the speakers before. And this, and this shows very uh, descriptively, very eloquently, why tourism is uh, important. If we now change a little bit perspective and look at it from the, from the trade as we do, and when we look into our statistics, for example, for 2019, especially because 2020 and 2021 uh, were quite particular um, with the context uh, that had an impact a lot on the figures. Uh, so we see that uh, in, in, in the region, in the Western Balkans, if we can set the part of the uh, from the Western Balkans, you have some 1 billion euro generated export um, per party, which altogether, uh, of all sector parties, including uh, Moldova, is uh, around 7.5 billion euro. This, of course, uh, has different relevance uh, for, for, for different economies. And obviously for our um, Adriatic Mediterranean coastal economies, which is high, as well, high 50% and for the others, it goes uh, between five and 15. But whatever, whichever this is uh, as the percentage, it shows that it has very strong, uh, very strong importance. And uh, uh, let me let me round up uh, perhaps this this small discourse by saying that tourism and, uh, has a very important role in building models for business driven cooperation. This is exactly because tourism is about movement, it is about collaboration, as you said. People move, but also with people we have services moving, we have capital moving, we have uh, goods moving as well. And if one of these aspects uh, is not working well, you will have impact on, on the results you have in tourism. And, uh, and, and in, in Serta, this is, this is quite, uh, uh, quite relevant because uh, when we started talking about uh, what uh, sector we should be within all the services uh, sectors we have, where we should start building stronger regional uh, cooperation or what we call the regional regulatory cooperation in order to boost economic effect, the, our parties, uh, the, the, the region was quite uh, unanimous it said tourism is uh, is a way to go and uh, with, with this with this I will close uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry that the, that the minister Bekesh was here I would just like to say that for this decision actually the, the two ministers uh, Koshare, Mr. Kosharek and Mr. Bekesh was were actually playing a huge yeah. role because they were the, the, the because this all discussion happened during the the Bosnian and the North Macedonian membership of CERTA in 2020 and 2021, and for this uh, uh, for this uh, I thank them, and I, I hope that later on we will uh, have the opportunity to talk more what this cooperation is about. Definitely, that we'll, we'll go back to that. Thank you for for the introduction and thank you for introducing uh, Minister Kosharec who contributed significantly. To, to 
boosting and uh, linking our region. Uh, therefore, Minister, I would like to, to, to ask you uh, why, from your perspective, the tourism sector is a key driver for economy in uh, Western Balkan, and uh, what uh, very concrete measures uh, your ministry and yourself have taken in the sense of developing and strengthening our cooperation. Moj engles nije baš najbolji i nemojte mi zamjeriti govorit ću na srpskom jeziku. Rekao prije svega da je naša primarna uloga da ojačamo našu ekonomiju. Svaka zemlja je ponao osobno i mislim da uloga politike u tom kontekstu treba da bude vidljiva. Naravno, neki procesi idu ubrzani, neki idu sporije, ali cijenim da je veoma značajno važno biti motivisan upravo s tom potrebom da uključimo sve moguće segmente društva kako bi ekonomiju zemalja podijeli na što je moguće veći nivo. Naravno, to nije uvijek lako. Ono što me posebno fascinira jeste česta, rekao bih, komentar ili priča da je veoma važno se regionalno družiti. I cijenim da iz faze deklarativnog moramo preći jednu praktičnu fazu da definišemo konkretne politike i konkretne korake. Ja bih rekao da mi je žao što u Bosni i Hercegovini ne ima dovoljno sluha za partnerstvo u Otvornom Balkanu, cijeneći da je to jedan od dobrih modela kako bi se svi zajedno etablirali i kako bi bili spremni za evropske izazove za koje cijenimo da su naši primarni politički ciljevi i oni jesu definisani u našim zemljama. Cijenim da ćemo to u našoj zemlji definisati vrlo brzo i da ćemo snagom argumenta koje želimo da prezentujemo naložnima to pitanje definisati tako što će konačno i Bosna i Hercegovina prihvatiti da bude članica otvrno Balkana, cijenijeći da je to jedna od dobrih, rekao bih, faza za regionalno povezivanje. Ono što bih ja otvorio ovdje jeste, a to me ponukalo, slušao sam predsjednike, jeste činjenica da li mi imamo snagu da promovišujemo taj balkanski patriotizam. Mi ukoliko ne možemo da promovišujemo balkanski patriotizam, ako ne možemo da se radujemo uspjesima jednih i drugih, ukoliko ne imamo adekvatne komunikacije, dobre odnose, nisam siguran. Bojim se da će biti Mnogo ovakvih konferencija u kojima ćemo samo deklarativno iskazivati, rekao bih, našu potrebu. Ili ćemo slušati ljudi koji dođu izvan ovih zemalja i da nam daju preporuke kako je to jako dobro. Mislim da imamo različite vrste iskustava, cijenim da imamo različite vrste praksi, bilo da je reč primjera dobrih, bilo loših praksi. Svjesni smo stanja naših ekonomija u našim zemljama, a smatram da je turizam upravo ta privredna grana koja može da motiviše tu regionalnu saradnju i da jednostavno kroz promociju vrijednosti turističkih potencijala kako Republike Srpske federacije Bosne i Hercegovine, tako i svih ostali zemalja u okruženju, možemo izaći iz tog okvira i pokušati napraviti zajednički turistički proizvod. Naravno i u našim zemljama, a u kontaktima i sa drugim ministrima, vidim da uvijek postoji ta jedna vrsta problema u definisanju turističkog proizvoda. Ja mislim da nas treba hrabriti u smislu jačanja ljudskih kapaciteta i resursa koji će biti permanentno uključeni u sektor turizma i moramo reći potpuno otvorno da su mnoge zemlje Zapadnog Balkana oskudne u tome. Nemojmo da sami sebe zavaravamo i kažemo da imamo taj potencijal. Ja nisam siguran da imamo taj potencijal i bez ljudskog potencijala adekvatne i kredibilne strukture ljudi iz tog sektora mislim da ćemo ići vrlo usporeno. U tom kontekstu želim da kažem da turizam posmatram kao jednu ozbiljnu šansu razvoja i Republike Srpske federacije, odnosno Bosne i Hercegovine i svih drugih zemalja u okruženju. Imao sam nekoliko kontakata sa ministrima u vladi Srbije i Crne Gore. Cijenili smo da određene napore trebamo zajedno da pokrenemo. Ostalo je na tom deklarativnom tumačenju, ali mislim da pandemija COVID-19 je pokazala da upravo taj unutrašnji turizam je nešto što je na neki način dalo mogućnosti našim turističkim radnicima da prežive u nekoj manjoj mjeri kako je to bilo 2019. godine. Cijenim da su sve države u okruženju vodile odgovornu politiku ili pitanju zdravstveni sektor i sam razvoj COVID-19. Bilo je od neke zimanja gdje je to bilo malo blaže i u svakom smislu vidjeli smo da postoji protok naših ljudi, da nema kod našeg običnog čovjeka nikakvi predrasu da da li će otići u Crnogor, da li će otići u Srbiju, da li će otići u Albaniju, da će otići bilo gdje drugo i mislim da to trebamo 
iskoristiti. Imamo taj potencijal. Vjerujem da adekvatna strateška kretanja nadležne institucije kako u mojoj zemlji, tako i u vašim zemljama mogu dati doprinos da ojačamo našu turističku privredu. Samo kaže statistika da svaki peti zaposleni radnik jeste iz turističkog sektora. Dovoljno govori da mi očigledno, moji saradnici koji su mnogo više inkorporirani u sektor turizme kažu da neke lokalne zajednice se turizam desile. Mi više ne možemo da to praktikujemo kao pravilno. Mi moramo imati strateške pristupe, moramo involirati sve nivoje vlasti koji će dati doprinos, ali ono što moram da kažem jeste da moramo adekvatno da promovišujemo naše komparativne predstavlje. Svaka zemlja, Zapadno Balkani imaju neku svoju komparativnu predstavlju. Dajte da promovišujemo komparativne predstavlje, da kažem ako je manjski turizam najrazvijeniji u Srbiji, uzmam primjer, da svi kažemo da je najrazvijeniji manjski turizam u Srbiji. Ako kažemo da je najbolji sportski turizam, skijaški turizam, najbolji u Bosni i Hercegovini, ajde da svi to promovišemo. Ako kažemo da je najbolje more i u Crnogoj gori i Albanije, ajde da to zajedno radimo. Tako da vjerujem da znamo šta nismo uradili. Vjerujem da postoji kapacitet, izvinjavam se, da postoji kapacitet svima nama da vidimo zajedno sa ovim, rekao bih, važnim organizacijama koji su prisutni u svakoj zemlji Zapadnog Balkana, kako možemo napraviti taj značajni iskorak. I naravno ono što je definitivno ključni problem svih lokalnih struktura, odnosno rekao bih zemanja, jeste naša infrastruktura i naša povezanost. To je ključni problem i mislim da svi imamo primjere takve praksi koje mogu da kažemo da na tom regionalnom planu svi zajedno moramo raditi na jačanju putne infrastrukture koja jeste jedna od ključnih preduslova razvoja turizma, naravno avio saobraćaj. Pokazatelji govori recimo samo o Bosni i Hercegovini, da tamo gdje imamo direktnu avioliniju, imamo najveći broj turista koji su prisutni u Bosni i Hercegovini. Recimo to su zemlje osim Srbije i Hrvatske, to su zemlje Saudijska Arabija, to je Vednja Arabska Emirata, to je to. To je preduslo. Hvala ministru. Switching back to English. Thank you for sharing your notes and follow up on that to see in more concrete manner how we can contribute with coming up with some conclusions from today's panel and conference on uh, what kind of policies are supposed to be reviewed and probably adopting some new strategies for IT to tourism development on both locally and regional levels. Um, together with us, we have a colleague from Montenegro, Mr. Mladen Grgic, director of Montenegrin Investment Agency. Uh, we are all aware and we have to admit it that Montenegro serves as one of the best examples on attracting investments to tourism sector in the past 20 years or so. Uh, so uh, I wonder, given that change has significant, the world has significantly changed in just the last couple of years, what is your new strategy now? What measures Montenegro uh, is planning to, to adopt, to utilize in order to ensure tourism growth and in order to, to attract more investors? to do better promotion of the region and, uh, of course, to, to include <laughs> all the others. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you uh, Sanya. And, uh, first of all, thank you for RCT for uh, this uh, really interesting event. And I'm very uh, honored to share uh, the panel with Mr. Kakanas and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ilic uh, and with you, of course, Sanya. Uh, basically, our uh, new strategy is to have one. Uh, so far, uh, I know the people uh, and wherever we go uh, are very uh, interested in uh, to hear uh, what we have done to attract such uh, such great investments uh, in Montenegro. I think, uh, to be very honest, here among uh, family and friends in the Balkans, uh, that uh, we didn't have any strategy. The things happened uh, at the beginning, uh, as we have uh, this economic boom in uh, 2006 and 8. Uh, we had uh, uh, we had uh, uh, a very strong growth in the real estate sector, and that just carried the tourism. And we had beautiful coast and and uh, and the rest of the country. We attract a couple of very uh, important projects. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, I mean now I can say fortunately those project uh, projects happened before we were ready for those projects. So we were learning by doing instead mm -hmm. of, let's say, planning and, and so on. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we, we lacked 
infrastructure in those regions and, and uh, we didn't have the structure to, to accommodate and uh, host such important projects, but these projects uh, happened and we had to adapt and we were learning and, and we, we, we learned many things. Uh, we, we stand as many other uh, countries to learn by our own mistakes and now we are trying to correct. Uh, we did, uh, our tourism uh, exploded in the, in the la last two uh, decades. We are probably the country in, in the Balkan that, uh, Balkans that uh, has the, the highest percentage of uh, GDP covered by tourism. In 2019, that was 32%. Uh, um, we had a tremendous number of people being employed by the tourists, and that explains explains why uh, we had such a, such a terrible drop in, uh, in GDP in 2020, because we had 80% uh, uh, less tourism uh, in 2020 than in 2019. And obviously we had to sit down and, and learn by uh, just observing how everything was, uh, was, uh, was changing uh, bef uh, before our eyes. And, and, and we are finally thinking, and I, I think there's a consensus among all the uh, political parties and, and, uh, and, and uh, NGOs and uh, other uh, movements that we need to, to, to uh, just uh, uh, change the way we are doing things. Um, uh, we, now we are trying to, uh, to combine the, the tourism uh, with other uh, sectors. We are attract, uh, attracting a lot of uh, IT uh, companies. Uh, these days, uh, Montenegro is becoming very popular among uh, digital nomads. Uh, we are investing uh, in the northern part of the country. Uh, funnily enough, Montenegro has uh, such, a, uh, such a high uh, percentage of tourists, but for example, 90% of the tourism is focused on the uh, coastal areas, and it's mostly focused uh, on the summer season. So, uh, and, and people who visited Montenegro, I think many did... Uh, these are not the most beautiful parts of Montenegro. I, I'm from the south, but I, I must say uh, that the, the beauty of Montenegro is in the north, uh, rivers, lakes, and so on. And, and we have there uh, such a, uh, it's almost like having, uh, you know, savings, because there's a huge opportunity there. We, uh, how we attr are attracting now the investors, we have a couple of things that are very interesting that I can share in this panel. Um, as I said, things have happened, we were not ready, and then we had a lot of uh, uh, accommodation, which was not part of the collective accommodation, but we had a lot of apartments for rent, so we, 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 we understood that we need to boost the investments in the hotels. We lowered, uh, we uh, erased the communal taxes for, uh, for uh, hotel constructions. We uh, have 7% uh, VAT uh, for hotels uh, now. Uh, first it was five-star hotels with a lower VAT. Uh, there are several other uh, benefits for people who are investing in hotels. We invested in uh, infrastructure like in the, in the north. We invested in the last five years, we invested more than 30 million as a government uh, in the ski slopes. We have 40 kilometers. We, in the next five years, we will have probably the, 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 the almost 80 kilometers of ski slopes in one area. Uh, that area, then we invested in a highway, uh, you will uh, land on, uh, on in Podgorica and you can go to ski slopes uh, in this area in uh, 25 minutes. That's something that we are attending to promote. To attract hotels in that area, we introduced also economic citizenship program, which was very successful. So people were uh, getting the passport by investing in the units uh, in those certain projects. So far, we collected almost 100 million uh, through, through this for uh, developing uh, infrastructure and so on. And uh, these projects have collected more than 150 million euros. Uh, not such a popular pro uh, project in Brussels, but uh, we did some uh, corrections recently. Uh, but we used this to, to boost uh, the tourists where we uh, didn't have uh, many I investments. And uh, uh, what, what, uh, what uh, to say in this uh, first round, uh, what we really need now and, and uh, to, to continue on what uh, Mr. Uh, the Minister have said, uh, what we really need to position ourselves as a, as a regional destination. I mean, uh, we, we had 
uh, if we want to uh, go to uh, super uh, uh, super lucrative uh, markets like Asia and United States, we cannot uh, show ourselves uh, alone. Uh, we need the region because these kind of uh, markets are looking uh, to, to, to visit many places and I think the, the physical infrastructure is uh, something that is the main barrier to this. Uh, it's very easy to, to arrive from Podgorica to Tirana and, and we, we, we have really great uh, connection and we often go to Scutari and, uh, and, and Tirana. Uh, but for example, to go to Sarajevo, you will need, uh, you know very well, four hours to, to pass 200 kilometers. Uh, to, to the road to Belgrade is getting uh, shorter and shorter, but still it's too long. Uh, and, and these are the things that we need, uh, need to, uh, to, 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 to change if we want to present ourselves together. And I think that's the, the, only, uh, the only solution we have, if we really want to position Balkans as a destination uh, in the global market. Wow. Thank you. Uh, Zdravko, are you still with us? Yes, yes, always. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, um, you and your colleagues at SEFTA, what have you identified as necessary measures in the threatening tourism sector as one of the key drivers for development? That's the, the, one of the key drivers and our biggest chance. So what have you identified at SEFTA, given that you have done a, a lot of analysis, researches, I, I hope you hear me well. My, uh, my internet connection is uh, not the best one. But if I understood your question well, it's about, uh, uh, it's about what the, were the challenges uh, identified by us for the development of, of tourism. And, um, That's right. Say that, yeah, we talked a lot about this uh, with our colleagues uh, uh, from the RTC. I know that they did a wonderful study uh, which uh, uh, uncovered uh, many aspects. Uh, we in SEFTA, we focused on uh, what uh, we call as a framework on, uh, on trade and services. And I would agree uh, as, a, as, a, let's say, uh, as a tourist, as a consumer with, uh, with the minister and the most minister here, it uh, has to be about the physical infrastructure. But as a, as a trade expert, I need to also, I need to also underline that there's uh, uh, a lot to be done, uh, a lot of potential to be released uh, uh, from also removing regulatory uh, impediments. And this is also, this is, uh, this is a real uh, trade experience that even when you build highways and, uh, and infrastructure, if the, 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 the risk for the regulatory reason, the, uh, the, the border control, for example, can eat up these benefits which you uh, which you create by investing in so much needed infrastructure. So these two things, uh, physical infrastructure, but also uh, trade facilitation or the, uh, the, the, the regulatory cooperation needs to go hand in hand. And in this context, we always say that if we want to build a proper uh, uh, regional product, we need a regional market for that. So the companies who need to, uh, need, to need to move uh, with their products uh, and services throughout the region uh, faster. And if we talk simply about uh, tourism, uh, we did with the DIZ uh, one analysis in which we compared the regulatory environment, for example, for the travel agencies and tour operators in the region, and we compared it with the, uh, with the situation their colleagues had in the European Union. And what we found, of course, was that it was much more expensive and, uh, uh, and there are much more hurdles for the, uh, for the companies to operate in multiple markets within SEFTA uh, in comparison to, uh, to the EU. The biggest problem uh, there uh, are the licenses and permits that uh, the companies need to, uh, need to have uh, in order to function in multiple markets. So if you are a, a German company or a Maltese company for that matter, you have basically on your phone very accessible acute market. But if you are a, a company from Montenegro or Bosnia and Herzegovina or Albania, if you want to, uh, if you want to um, branch out to increase your market, 
you need to uh, you need to get uh, uh, you need to invest much more money, much more time, much more people in order to come to that. So, uh, and we know that the companies at the end of the day uh, are the ones who need, which need to pick up the work of the um, the work uh, of every state level, every national level, etc. Such as SEPTA, and to, to actually build the uh, the products which they will offer to the um, to the tourists uh, to outside of the region or inside the region. So, so this is something that we we saw as uh, as uh, one of the key uh, hurdles, but uh, in which we would like to learn and copy. And here I. Um, I want to. I wanted to actually to, to quote the. I think the mayor, the Tirana, who mentioned that we ought to uh, to, to, to build a little piece of Europe in uh, in our own area where we are called to serve. And this is exactly this is exactly the approach. Uh, I think of the whole regional market, not just SEPTA, but the entire regional market uh, uh, project is. But besides that, I would also like to mention some others which uh, might not be. Uh, directly relevant, uh, uh, directly linked to tourism, but are uh, 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 relevant as well. For example, we have initiatives in electronic commerce, which should facilitate uh, easier development of uh, online offer of the uh, uh, of the different services, including tourism, for the development of companies who would uh, who would do it in the region and. The development of the feeling of the ones who buy these products, uh, uh, the, the, that they are safe, uh, that they are protected uh, uh, when they do it. Uh, this is also related to a number of problems that they have uh, and number of costs that we generate uh, uh, when the companies are trying to go online or to to, to, uh, to shop online. And this is uh, this is something that we also try to do, which I believe will perfectly fit. With this uh, initiative on 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 online services, and finally, let me let me also mention something that uh, uh, the something that can be relevant for all the people who need to move with these tourism groups. You know, if you if you have a group which will which will visit a couple of markets in uh, in the Balkans, you normally you would have some people that will move uh, with their profession uh, with them, and uh, the question is, of course. Uh, whether these people will uh, be able to move because of the problems such as work permit, or whether they will be able to deliver a service because of the problems such as professional qualifications. And this is something. These are these are the these are the uh, all the, the the challenges that uh, uh, that we identified that we had on our radar, and of course that are reflected in the in the agenda that we have. Thank you, thank you, Zranko. Uh, if I may add. Um I mean, I, I think we are all very, very uh, good at identifying problems, but when it comes to finding solutions, especially in such a complex um, and, and fragmented uh, system, uh, that's where we are stuck. So I would like to, to, to talk about solutions and some recommendations on how to, to, to fight all these challenges and, and barriers. And, um, uh, I guess for for her final remarks, uh, hopefully we we're going to have some something some measures that that are uh, to be implemented or at least to be to be identified as as a part of a solution. Uh, and in that sense, I would like to to ask our minister Kosharets um, what. Uh, our country, Bosnia and Herzegovina, is doing in that sense of removing barriers to his uh, everything. What is uh, under under your uh, ministry? So, trading, travel, development of infrastructure. Uh, I know you have been very active and that you have done whatever you could in, in our specifically complex complex system and, and fragmented legislation. To, to fight the, the barriers, at least for, for the private sector. Uh, so just share with us some good examples of good practice, please. Evo, ja bih rekao prije svega da da bi smo bilo šta mogli da riješimo, mora da postoji otvorena komunikacija. Većina zna da na putnom pojasu između Bosne i Hercegovine i Crne Gore je postojala 
takozvana ona rampa za pucarin. Na našu preporuku i konsultaciju koju smo imali sa tadašnjim premijerom Crne Gore, definisali smo da je neophodno i važno to pitanje reći kako se ta pucarina prestala da plaća, jer ona jeste jedna vrsta barijere. Mnogi su govorili, znate, to je nemoguće, postoji ugovor i kontrakt koji ne postoji. Vidjeli smo da onda kada identifikujemo probleme, kada zajednički pričamo kako i na koji način možemo nešto da uradimo i kada smo svi mobilni, uspjeli smo recimo da jednu takvu vrstu barijere otklonimo kada je u pitanju transporta putnika na relaciji Bosne i Hercegovine Crna Gora i danas nema te puta. Ovo sam uzao kao jedan klasičan primjer, cijeneći da možda upravo sa ovoga forma bi trebalo da se potakne jedna ideja da zajednički jedno nejen adekvatan način pristupimo ideji integrisani granični prelaza zemalja Zapadnog Balkana. Mi imamo tu ljudi problem. Danas kada krenete, vi ste kolega jako dobro rekli, trebate za četiri sata da putujete do Sarajeva. Kad bilo koji turist kreni, kad dođe naše granične prelaze, tad zaista ima ključni problem. Zastoje po nekoliko sata. Ja vam vjerujem da postoji sva vrsta razmišljanja, postoji jedna inicijativa, u ovom slučaju gronačenika, Herceg Novog, da se tom pitanju na graničnom prelazu Plobuk sitni sa to pitanje pokušavam da riješim. Ali to ne smije da bude pojedinačno rješenje, ja smatram da to treba bude sistemsko rješenje. To će na značajan način ubrzati protok ljudi, to će osnažiti naše turističke radnike, to će, rekao bih, biti jedan od onih preduslova koje trebamo da riješimo, zašto nam ne trebaju pari iz Evrope, zašto nam ne trebaju sredstva nekih financijskih organizacija i tako da. S druge strane, treba istaći definitivno da čini mi se veoma skromno promovišemo adekvatni turistički potencijal i rezultat. Ja to mogu da govorim iz aspekta Bosne i Hercegovine, ne mogu možda ni u potnosti, s obzirom da Ministarstvo spodne trgovine, ekonomski odnos ima tu vrstu koordinirajuće uloge, dva entitetska ministarstva i ovdje danas sa nama je prisutno ministarstvo turizma u vladi federacije Bosne i Hercegovine. Ali cijenim da u tom kontekstu jednostavno moramo da promovišujemo na jedan adekvatan način sve ono što možemo da ponudimo, odnosno da kroz određene agencije koje su zadužene za promociju stranje investicija malo više otvorimo mogućnosti za inostrano ulaganje u turistički sektor. Porazan je podatak da je svega jedan procenat stranje investicija u sektor turizma u Bosni i Hercegovini. Ja mislim da se u tome mora aktivnije i značajnije raditi. Cijenimo da postoje određeni napor već na nivou kantona Sarajevo i nekih drugih regiona, ali definitivno treba vam reći, istaći da sve investicije u turičkom sektoru primarno dolaze iz privatnog sektora. Možda jedan od primjera javne investicije u turizam jeste investicija vlade Republike Srpske u Jahornju, koja iznosi blizu stotinu miliona u prošloj godini i mislim da najmanje još toliko ima investicija od strane privatnog sektora na Jahornju. Možda i to može biti jedan od primjera, znam da i kanton Sarajevo nešto investira na Bjelašnju. Cijenim da tu postoji različita vrsta iskustava i cijenim da kroz jedan strateški pristup, kroz jedan otvoren dijalog svih zainteresovanih strana u zemlji i naravno strani investitora, to pitanje trebamo na jedan adekvatni način rješati. Bilo je prisutna mobilnost. Znate, uvijek postoje oportuni stavovi da institucije nisu radili najbolji dio posla, ali kada je u pitanju COVID-19 i saniranje određenih Posljedica COVID-19 vidimo da su institucije koje je zato nadležno nivo entiteta imali određene politike. Možda te politike nisu bile dovoljne, možda se jedino je bilo realno, ali vidljivo je da se u datim okolnostima možemo adaptirati kako bi jednostavno bili svi zajedno u jednoj vrsti tih problema. Ono što također želim da kažem, evo recimo što je jedan primjer, ko o čemu ja o Jahornje, ali zato što sam blizu Jahornje, je dobar primjer bio recimo da turista koji dođe na Bjelašnju i kupi ski pas može da skije na Jahornje. Dobro je bila, mislim da je to bila jedna akcija da onaj koji kupi ski pas, tako je, u Sloveniji može skija na jahar, onaj koji je kupio ski pas na Koponiku može da skija na jahar. Znači, naši ljudi adaptiraju i prilagođavaju različitim uslovom, ali mislim da je odgovornost svih nas u tom sistemu da na jedan adekvatni način pristupimo nekim kreiranjima adekvatnih politika bez nekih velikih sredstava koje su neophodne od nekih fondova. Mi obično kažemo, znate, evo, nije trebao novac za skidanje ove putarine, jeste vlada Crne Gore isplatila koncijes, ali je riješila problem, ne znam, neke druge putne komunikacije. Mislim da treba da postoji jedna adekvatna mobilnost, imamo različite vrste praksije, ali u svakom smislu reći da kroz regionalno umrežavanje 
regionalno zagovaranje određenih rješenja. Ja tvrdim, ako postoje regionalno zagovaranje za integrisane granične prelaze, hajde to kažemo, da možemo to i vremenski ograničiti u vrijeme turističke ljetne sezone, u vrijeme zimske. Zna se gdje, na koji način, tačno postoji statistika kroz koje granične prelaze, koliko putnika prelaze. Pa dajte da tu izađemo, zato nam ne treba niko sa strane. Ja zato apel da zaista na tom planu zajedno integrisano radimo. Hvala. Thank you for providing very, very nice solutions, very concrete solutions. It just reminded me, talking about um, Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina, road infrastructure and connections, uh, my colleague who is um, executive director of FIC in Montenegro, when I invited him to come in Jahorina for a conference, he said to take that road. He meant Stepan Polje, Podgorica, Sarajevo, with his road of approximately 200 kilometers. He said, please, I, took, I did it once. I'm not going to do it again. And now, I mean, I, I'm sure those kind of things uh, could be done easily and, and to find the solutions because to take the road of maybe even less than 200 kilometers, it takes how many hours? So, um, Mladen, I'm sure you, you might contribute in getting some solutions to, to this topic, but also I wanted to, to, to follow up on what Minister said, in a sense that, that um, uh, threatening public-private dialogue and public-private investments and uh, public-private partnerships. I know Montenegro has been doing a lot recently, and I hope uh, we as a region and also as individual economies and countries will, will be working more and more on this especially Bosnia and Herzegovina, because we are li really left behind. I hope if you have some good practices or, or projects to be announced, please share it with us. Yes. Uh, th thank you. Yes, I, I mean, Minister uh, got to the very concrete point, and, and I think we have good examples, but uh, it, there's still uh, uh, so many things to be done. Uh, regarding the regional infrastructure, we, we have to say uh, many things have improved, and, and we have this uh, road uh, at the one part of the highway being finished uh, in Montenegro. Serbia did uh, amazing things uh, in, uh, in infrastructure recently, and I, I, I believe in a couple Albania of years. Albania as well. Albania Years as ago. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I use uh, Albanian highway uh, a mm -hmm. lot to go to Kosovo and then Macedonia. And, and uh, but to say, I uh, last month to go to Plav and Gusinje, I uh, go from Podgorica to Albania and, and go up just to show you how uh, connected we are and how the borders are just, uh, you know, uh, uh, relative. Uh, and, and it's easier for me to take that road uh, and then to go through Montenegro. And if there was not a border, uh, that, that will be uh, uh, just amazing. Uh, and, uh, the, but what I said, like, uh, this, uh, we, we will soon have this connection. We are discussing the connection, the famous uh, Adriatic Ionian uh, highway, mm -hmm. which will connect uh, Croatia, Montenegro, and Albania. I think the main the main uh, problem that remains is, uh, is with Bosnia, which, which uh, for me, I, I, uh, I take that road very often. I used to work in Bosnia and take that uh, road when you bring uh, foreigners uh, on the way and they, they, they just get uh, scared uh, when you cross that. If, <laughs> if I may interrupt you, I took them once and there was a speed limit 10. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I said, I asked them, would you like us to take the main road or a longer road via Trebinje, and they were like, no, 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 we'll take the main road. I said, okay, it's not, it's not a, you've never seen a road like that. And then when they saw the speed limit 10, they thought it was a joke, they, they couldn't believe it. So uh, that's the main road between two capitals. I, I know, and, and that's, that's, uh, that is something that's really uh, unexplainable. Uh, but it can be changed, and, and it needs the dialogue. You mentioned public-private partnership. Uh, uh, the Montenegro Investment Agency is the core institution uh, dealing with the PPP in Montenegro. Uh, we approved the project and so on. We have a new law, so the new projects are just uh, starting to come. Uh, I believe uh, this can be a solution with the regional uh, highways. Uh, any study you will do in Montenegro uh, to build the highway it's negative, uh, and because we are small. We, if you ask a uh, foreign expert, 
do you need a highway? They will tell you you don't need a highway, you have 600,000 people, uh, the people are dispersed, and, and, and so on. But if we show the regional uh, projects, if we show this is not Montenegrin, I mean, the, the having, uh, when you just say Montenegrin Highway, uh, sounds ridiculous because we are so small, 600,000 people. It's, it's regional highway. Uh, it's a highway from Zagreb to Tirana. It's, it's not Montenegrin. And I believe this project needs to uh, become international. And uh, public-private partnership can be used if we find uh, a, a, a private entity that believe this can be uh, uh, profitable. And I believe if we combine together, it can be profitable. There are also, and I to go back again to the minister's uh, comments, there are also those things that are very easy to be done. Uh, to just give you an example, I always wonder why in Skadar Lake we don't have a ferry connection between Kutari and Virpazar which is very easy, and I'm not talking about massive ferries, about electric boats, okay. and this can be easily be funded by uh, European yeah. funds, by international funds, and to be amazing to have the, uh, this, this line. Uh, the, the railway is another thing where we really need to work on, because exactly. this is, I believe, the future. Uh, I saw it in uh, Asia. Uh, it's all about having good trains, uh, having a good train between uh, Belgrade and Bar uh, and Belgrade and Podgorica, I mean, you will never use uh, the, the airplane. And we are talking about eco-friendly solutions, about reducing pollution. And, uh, and train is a viable to single people because to travel in car is becoming more and more expensive. You get to the train, you arrive uh, from the downtown to downtown, and this is something else. I know there are, there is to, to be, it's not that everything is a dead end. There is a couple of projects in Montenegro and in cooperation with European Union and uh, different international funds where there is this idea of uh, having a train between uh, Podgorica and Sarajevo. I think it's feasible. Uh, it might uh, be less uh, financially, financially sustainable but these are projects that we need to do uh, regardless of the of mm -hmm. finance. Uh, we, we need to connect and that's the only uh, solution. And that has a huge impact. I mean, uh, even if it's not financially justified at that moment, we are all aware of, of the huge impact it has. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to keep uh, 45 minutes as, as uh, it was given according to the program and organizers and Unfortunately, we have just tapped the, the, the uh, tip of the iceberg here. Um, there are a lot of open questions and, and doubts in practice, and I'm sure inevitably we'll have to continue a discussion on this topic, uh, both in open or in, in closed sessions. Um, I would ask you for brief and, and uh, uh, some closing remarks, uh, some final messages, I like what you said about this Balkanski patriotism. I think we could all work, work on that, promote it. And also uh, if uh, any kind of joint and systematic solutions uh, that we can think about it and take it from here and as a, as a conclusion, part of your conclusion remarks would be highly appreciated. Uh, Zdravko, given that we started with you, please. Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Tanya. Well, I will, as, as, as a matter of conclusion, as a matter of the recommendations uh, that come from us, it's in a way written two years ago in a document which is called Common Regional uh, Market Action Plan, in which we said there's a very basic principle of solving the problems uh, which are related to market integration. But we know now, I mean, we heard also from from other guests, uh, other speakers, that it's not all about the, the regulatory market process. But let me uh, uh, focus a little bit on this particular uh, issue. And here, the idea is that all our problems in the Western Balkans uh, uh, will eventually join the EU and become the part of the EU single market. And again, uh, I am I'm, 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 uh, again quoting uh, 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 this line from the uh, from from this morning uh, when he says, "Let's build a little bit of Europe for ourselves," and that that can be translated in a way into let let's not reinvent the wheel. So that means that if the licenses are a problem, let's divide the system 
Municipal Record Sanctuary licenses, the similar, uh, similar uh, what we have in the EU, so that our companies uh, uh, will have at least uh, a market which is uh, uh, from three to ten times bigger, and at least some breathing space to develop products uh, and services, which then will further link the the, the, the touristic uh, offer of the of the different sector markets uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, if this, if for this we need people to move around in Peru, then let's address this topic uh, as well by adapting the EU model into the into the region. Let's remove, for example, the um, the work permits for the for the posted workers who are temporarily moving and providing uh, uh, services to these people who are uh, who who bought uh, the, uh, the the touristic products which which involve more than one market. If the problem is the, if the problem is their qualification, uh, uh, let's, let's build a system which will allow fast and efficient uh, uh, professional, uh, recognition of professional qualifications. You know, for example, uh, this for, for health tourism, this is, this is extremely important uh, uh, for, for, for people to increase the quality of, the, of their services. This is just uh, one way of looking at it. And then again, as I mentioned, for the electronic uh, commerce, let's let's uh, commit to what what we call the common uh, market principle, in which the companies who offer digitally uh, uh, tourist and other services will not have to uh, uh, will not have to invest money into accommodating, for example, six different uh, laws on uh, consumer protection in the in the border, mm -hmm. but just the local one where they are where they are built, but which will be uh, supported with a certain level of harmonization of the consumer protection standards, so that the consumers know that if if I buy something in in Bosnia, Albania, Montenegro, Kosovo, that this that my right at, uh, will be preserved at least at some kind of minimum level, which is the situation which which we have in the EU. And this is, these are all concrete initiatives we are discussing, negotiating, and in some of them uh, we are uh, almost ready to adopt them and then to implement them. So this is going on. Perhaps the, the, the and there are, this is not everything. As I mentioned, for example, payments, uh, the colleagues from the, from the Regional Cooperation Council and the, and, the, and the World Bank as well are working on this to decrease the cost of payment. So when you buy something with your card, for example, the, that this is the that this is the, this doesn't cost you uh, four cents. Also, the, the geo blocking, for example, initiative that you know if 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 you go with your with your Mastercard to another region and somebody tells you, oh no, but we don't accept this card because this is happening. This is, for example, happening with the with some rent a car services, which is again something that 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 creates a tourist or a tourist experience as well. So these are all again initiatives that are going on. The basic principle is we let's not reinvent the wheel and let me try to peel, copy, adapt the, 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 the EU models that work uh, and uh, have it presented to, to our companies and on our tourism. Thank you. Thank you, Zalko. We will definitely follow up on, on some of the topics you mentioned because we have been working on that at, at the same time. Um, Minister, please, your closing remarks, your message. Ja sam tu prvo raz pričao i sad je to veliki problem. Rekao bi prije svega da se vratimo ovaj put, počeo še pametno. Ja sam došao s njim putem posle sastanka sa ministrom trgovine i vladi Turske, Sinek. I znam kakav je put. Isto tako, kada nekada kažem, možda u političku ili neku drugu konotaciju, da je Bosna i Hercegovina paradoks države ili zemlje, Evo, recimo, ozbiljan primjer upravo ta relacija Foča, Šepan, Polje. Ako kažemo da na toj komunikaciji putnik koja je možda najlošija u zemlji, imam ozbiljan turistički gigant, rafting karo. To sam krenula da kažem upravo. To je nevjerovatno, to je ozbiljna fabrika para. Da, da. Ozbiljna fabrika para. Ja ću nadovezati na ovo što je kolega rekao. Kada je Republika Srpska, jer to je teritorija Republike Srpske, traži novac iz evropskih fondova, za put počak šepan polje imamo problem. Bilo da je riječ nekom uslovljavanju, bilo ovo je ekonomski, odnosno finansijski opravljeno. I naravno imaš problem da dobiješ sredstvo. 
ali kada bi svi zajedno od Tirani i Podgorke i Sarajevo i Banja Luke rekli da to veoma značajno i važno da bismo povezali Sarajevo i Tiranu, onda vjerovatno bismo dobili novac. Ja vjerujem da ovdje ima dosta šanse za regionalnu saradnju, regionalnu sliku. Ako mi to budemo dobro apostrofirali, stavili šta su nam to ključni prioriteti. Ja vjerujem da o ovim stvarima treba možda u nekom i drugačijem formatu govoriti, jer procenjuju sve zemlje u okruženju da je turizam ozbiljno potencijal. Šta nas to sprečava da budemo uspješni, šta nas to sprečava da budemo i individualno kao zemlje uspješni, šta nas to sprečava da budemo regionalno uspješni, dajte da pričam, dajte da o tome govorim. Ja sam rekao jednom malom primjeru, posvećeno se od dva ili tri dana ili mjesec dana, smo neke administrativne ili putne barijere riješili. Ovdje definitivno, po mojom mišljenju, globalno, imamo problem u tome što mi sami sebe ne smatramo regionalnim turističkim tržištima, i mislim da to treba afirmisati, da nedovoljno afirmisamo i promovišemo naše vrijednosti, naše rezultate, da nedovoljno koristimo jedni od drugih primjere dobri praksi i iskustva, nedovoljno radimo na edukaciji ljudi, to je neko moje skromno zapažanje i mislim da upravo onim bolnim pitanjima za čije rješenje ne treba mnogo, ne treba nam niko, je neophodan dialog kako bismo ta pitanja potaknuli riješili, rekao sam sad, ne znam, tegočan granični prelaz, ne znam, i mnoge druge aktivnosti koje zaista možemo raditi, rekao bih, vrlo brzo. Hvala. Hvala. Thank you. Ovaj, ja, izvjetno sam pozitivan u smislu onoga što slijedi, jer mislim, često ne vidimo stvari da se minja, ali one se stvarno minjaju. Ja prvi put sam bio u Tirani 2004. godine. Mislim, tada Tirana i sada Tirana su dva svijeta. U Podgorici sam iz Bara, ali u Podgorici su bili moji babe i djed uporediti Podgoricu prije 20 godina i današnju Podgoricu je gotovo da ne pričamo o Beogradu, da ne pričamo o ostalim gradovima. Stvari se mijenjaju nekad sporo, nekad možda nekako bismo htjeli, ali mislim da možemo stvari da još uvijek da preokrenemo. Ono što nama treba jeste da shvatimo da nam je regionalna saradnja neminovnost, ne zato što je to neki uslov koji traži Bristel, Evropska unija ili neko treći, već zato što je to ključ za ekonomski razvoj. Dakle, vezano za ovaj put i potpuno se se slažem sa ministrom, mi treba da sjednemo regionalno, da vidimo koji su nam prioriteti sami i onda da tražimo novac i da one, ako nemamo novca, da one kojima tražimo novac, ubijedimo da nam taj novac treba. Dakle, nema razloga da se te stvari ne dešavaju po meni. Dakle, treba da se okrenemo sebi. Odlično je rekao jutros gradonačelnik Tirane da stvorimo svoju Evropu. Mi nema šta da stvaramo Evropu. Mislim, mi smo Evropa istorijski. Neko monopolizuje te ideje i nudi nam ih kao da smo mi neki sad izvanjci kojima treba neko da... Mislim, mi smo Evropa, ovdje je Evropa nastala, znači na Balkanu, isto koliko i na drugim mjestima. Dakle, mi smo Evropa, mi treba da razmišljamo kako da unapredimo tu saradnju, bez obzira na to šta neko kaže, koje su sugestije, i da rješavamo ova pitanja koja su mala. Evo, ovaj je dobar primjer sa tom putarinom koja je bila potpuno suluda i da krenemo od tih malih stvari ka velike. Hvala, Mladen, and thank you, Mladen. You've naturally switched back to your mother tongue. I apologize if I didn't want to interrupt you. I don't need to repeat. It was translated. But I have to go back to English and finalize this discussion, even though I would love to talk to you for hours, but I'm sure we'll continue our discussions. On behalf of the FIC, uh, I, I just want to share with all of you that we are committed to innovation and improvement of business environment at both regional and local level, and we are very active in uh, encouraging this dialogue between various stakeholders and all actors 
uh, aimed at improving the area, especially here in the, when it comes to tourism, because that's the, the hottest topic in, in the region and in our country as well. Uh, so we will continue to address this topic on, on various instances and levels and with key stakeholders. We will try to define urgently what is needed and once to, given that we have two ministers here, I guess we can do it uh, easily to come up with solutions that can be easily implemented and adopted in order for, for our country to be more competitive and to work on implementation of tourism channels on this Western Balkan uh, as well to, to the extent possible. Uh, also, I think what we could all do now, as uh, what I would recommend, is raising awareness of Balkan as, as one region and raising importance of uh, promotion Balkan as a favorable and beautiful tourism destination. So wherever we go, to whomever we speak, I think we can do that uh, in both individual manner and uh, on behalf of the institutions that we represent. I want to thank you all for your attention. Thank you for the organizers for respecting this gender balance because uh, today <laughs> I have <laughs> three gentlemen. The previous one was <laughs> more ladies, but you respected the gender balance. And uh, I remain at your disposal for any kind of support, f further cooperation, whatever you need. Thank you. Thank wow. you, dear panelists. Thank you.
Check, check, check. How do I keep yeah. Yes, it's ready. Okay, okay. Ah, okay. Noi me turizem që sa vjet, dhe kjo pun është bo puna krysore në familjen tonë për burë dhe për fmite mi, dhe jenë hapë rrugë të reja, presim, kemë nevoj edhe për punëtor të ri. But this is not the end. Show must go on. Good afternoon and welcome to our third panel. I'd like to use this opportunity to greet our online uh, watchers because there are quite some people uh, watching this conference online. And uh, would like to introduce myself. I'm Alexandra Drinic, coming from Banja Luka, uh, from uh, northwest of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Been working in uh, tourism for past two decades and I'm really uh, honored to be here uh, with you today as uh, speaking from the experience uh, I can say that this is actually in during past uh, two years that uh, everybody started speaking about tourism as the important sector it wasn't the case like 10 or 15 years ago really so I'm glad to see that uh, today we're gonna speak about probably most complex and most important issue in tourism sector and that's uh, it's people tourism is about people it depends on people so we're gonna speak about people although we call them in our studies, analysis, human resources. So forgive us for referring to people uh, that way. I'd like to introduce and welcome our uh, panelists. We have a very uh, relevant and competent people joining us today. Uh, we have uh, Tina uh, Sharic, Sharic uh, who's the director of the uh, ed Education Reform Initiative in Southeastern Europe. Uh, welcome, Tina. Uh, Ro Robert D. is co-director of a uh, quite new but already very popular platform, New Deal Europe, uh, and he will speak about uh, that later on. Welcome, Robert. Uh, the Minister of uh, Kosovo Tourism and Industry is joining us on online, and like, I'd like to welcome her and apologize for actually uh, 
keeping them waiting because uh, this panel is uh, half an hour late and I do hope that they will accept our apologies because you never, I mean, it's always with the conferences that way. Minister, thank you so much for joining us today. We also have another very interesting uh, young lady that's already CEO of a, a private association. She's joining us from uh, sunny Montenegro, Nikolina Kovacevic. Nikolina, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd like, as we, as we had an opportunity to hear uh, from uh, different ministers about what's going on in tourism sectors in the countries, I'd like to invite Minister, Minister uh, Rosetta Haidari to tell us a bit about uh, what's happening in tourism uh, in Kosovo and how does she see tourism development in the next few years? Thank Honestly. you very much. Greetings to all. Uh, I apologize for not being there physically due to a very not busy uh, agenda I had today at this week. I was just, um, but I was in Albania just a few days ago during weekend. I hope to join you physically in, in next meetings as it's important for us regional uh, development and regional cooperation among different uh, states. Kosovo uh, has worked on the promotion of tourism. We, as the new government, we have moved with the law for uh, tourism development and also with the actual finalization of the strategy for tourism development. We, uh, we have given the emphasis on uh, cultural and uh, nat uh, natural uh, assets of the country, but also human, that is very much important as the most valuable resource for, for uh, general economic development, but also human uh, development. We have addressed all these in tourism strategy program 2022-2030, which foresees investment in also infrastructure uh, for uh, the destinations that we have identified, especially around mountains where different uh, assets are there, uh, just waiting for some more infrastructure, more electricity connection, and more exposure of uh, the buildings and uh, restoration of the locations, sorry, the assets that we have identified for more uh, development and promotion of the cultural heritage, but also on hotel accommodation, adding more uh, of space for, for guests and for tourists. Uh, to be turned everything in uh, guest house, we are giving a focus to rural uh, development. Agriculture uh, also is important because we will connect this as tourism a value chain, including also the culture of artisans and uh, handicrafts and more. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just as short to mention, but there are five uh, objectives in the strategy uh, objectives that we are putting. And uh, the, the first one is all about to increase promotional activities and improve the flow of information. Just last uh, weekend with Minister of Albania for Tourism and Environment, Mirela Kumbaro, we agreed to have a joint uh, platform for digital uh, tourism in between two countries, but we will welcome more uh, players to, uh, to join our initiatives. And it's going a lot in terms of state to state, but uh, regional cooperation is, is very important as one goal, one approach between six countries. And knowing that many uh, studies, especially after COVID, uh, have shown that Kosovo and other countries of Western Balkan has a lot of potential for near shoring, not only for tourism. It's, it's great to have some uh, joint initiatives for integration of value chain, integration of services in this uh, sense with tourism. Important to mention is also ICT sector, which will, uh, which will enable the tourism development as it's growing very fast in our country, uh, up to 60% of the exports of services are uh, given from the ICT sector. 60% uh, of the revenue, I would say, from the sector given from uh, to abroad, to Germany, Austria, and other countries more. USA including. More other objectives include creation, advancement of quality and sustainable infrastructure that I just mentioned, then uh, 
third objective of the program includes uh, expand the tourist offer according to sustainability standards, increase competitiveness, and uh, also uh, increase human capacity to increase staff in labor market and improve services. There we foresee more of strengthened cooperation between public and private sector, but also support uh, to review the law for uh, Chamber of Commerce, which will certify in future uh, different businesses that can uh, provide the competence and can offer some more training for the staff that mm -hmm. are already uh, prepared but would be more in need to uh, increase their competence for offering the, the services in terms of tourism uh, sector from different subsectors. The vision therefore is to uh, to see Kosovo that by 2030 to become a very sustainable and competitive tourist destination in the region. And uh, sustainability is one of the main principles in the development trajectory of this, uh, of this uh, program. I would just conclude with this. Thank you, Minister. So you're just actually confirming that uh, uh, governments across the region are uh, paying uh, attention to tourism and uh, taking serious uh, steps in the uh, direction of developing sustainable tourism. Uh, you also mentioned that one of your priorities is the human resources development, and I'd like to ask Tina to uh, tell us a bit more about one interesting initiative that they worked on and completed, uh, uh, and that uh, it applies to your, the creation of a joint or regional occupational standard uh, for tourism industry. Tina, can you please tell us a bit more about that? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you for inviting me for this panel. It is my pleasure. Um, before I start, before I get into this, um, I will just say a little bit about my organization, which is not actually dealing with tourism, but we are dealing with education. However, I think we all already understand that one cannot go without the other. So I think it is very important to ensure this connectivity between education and um, business sector, in this case tourism. So what we have done is that um, we have made um, some kind of an alliance between the VET agencies, which are the agencies um, working on the area of vocational education and training in the region, in the six economies of the Western Balkans, and we have connected them with the chambers of commerce uh, who have a link to the business representatives. And we have identified which of the sectors are relevant for all the economies in the region. So tourism, of course, was one of them. And then we try to identify which occupations need to be developed further in order to satisfy the demands of the labor market. So what came out as our, let's say, research was that one of the occupations that is needed and not really modernized or, or fully integrated is the occupation of, for an hotel restaurant technician. So this came as the result of, of um, needs of smaller um, hotel owners, uh, boutique hotel owners, who need workers who are more kind of um, um, diversified so they can offer different competences. Competences, for example, for being a receptionist, but also at the same time competences for being a waiter or something like that. So uh, then we moved on to the development of the standard of occupation, uh, taking into account those identified needs by the employers from the region, from the whole six economies, and we translated them into this document. And maybe for those of you who are coming from the tourist sector, maybe you don't know the importance of this document, uh, occupational standard, but this is actually the basis on which future education programs are built. So if you have a good occupational standard, which identifies the needs of the labor market, then you will further on develop also the educational program, which will reflect the needs of the labor market. And that was something that was really an issue. Um, all of the strategic documents state that, this, that there is a very strong mismatch between what the employer's needs and what the education offers. So this is how we try to kind of uh, match, make a match. And then we developed it. We made really great um, uh, awareness of the uh, ecological sustainability. So how to ensure the waste, the proper waste management, how to connect 
with the local producers. Then also we decided to uh, strengthen more this cultural awareness because I think it was mentioned several times during this uh, conference that the profile, that the characteristics of the tourists is changing. So they're coming from different cultures with different traditions. So people need to be prepared for this. We also included a lot of digital competences because today I think it is quite clear you cannot have any job without digital competences. Also gender equality. So we really made sure that this is something that is developed um, in, in, in line with the, the modern needs of the labor market. So um, apart from that, I think another benefit was that the whole region actually agreed on this, like what is needed by everybody. So the circulation of the labor force is much easier because an employer from Montenegro will know what, uh, what this uh, job, which was finished in Bosnia and Herzegovina, what it implies. So I think there are very many benefits to, to this type of approach. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to move to Nikolina Kovacevic. She has a very uh, interesting uh, story to tell, actually. Nikolina, uh, you are CEO of uh, Montenegro Luxury, uh, Luxury Association. Can you uh, tell us, uh, and you leading a group of very young people as far as I could see, can you tell us uh, what actually uh, made you make this decision to, to start the uh, association? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation. It is really a great pleasure to be part of this event and try to add value in solving certain issues. Uh, I'm very sorry because I wasn't able to come and be with you in person on the panel today, but I'm sure that uh, there will be another opportunity very soon. Well, let's first say what is Montenegro Luxury Association and then what motivated us to organize such an association. Uh, Montenegro Luxury Association is a digital brand that on innovative way aims to promote Montenegro and the high quality tourist offer. The goal of our association is to cooperate with local partners and by using technology and modern marketing strategy to highlight the best of the best that Montenegro has to offer in front of as many digital network users as possible. Um, our main goal is introducing the luxury experience in our country by partnering with brands of highest repetition, resort and five-star hotels, exceptional restaurants and government organizations related to tourism and country promotion. Um, as an organization, we aim for a smaller group, but the highest quality. And at the moment, we are not thinking about quantity, we are thinking um, not only about quality. So the association was formed in the desire to improve and promote the services of Montenegro. One more important thing I want to emphasize is that our brand, as you mentioned, is managed by a team of young uh, and ambitious people. And as our team uh, aims to show the magic of our loved home country together, we created something completely new in this area, a unique NFT collection that will open a new window uh, to the world for Montenegro. I'm not sure how many of you is actually familiar with the, with the meaning of word NFT, actually non-fungible token. So in short, first I would, uh, like to try to explain what NFT is and why it is very popular and why we should keep in track uh, with this project. Non-fungible token is a relatively new type of a digital asset that solves the problem that many artists face, uh, copyright, uh, use and plagiarism. NFT can be a photograph, graphic image, video or whatever you want it to be. The reason why it's becoming increasingly popular is the fact that there, can, uh, that there can only be one owner of unique NFT and you can plagiarize it. So uh, maybe some of you know, maybe not. We have launched an NFT project on 22nd of February and it's called Treasure of Montenegro. And it is a concept of 777 art pieces that represent the beauty of our country. Most, uh, most uh, breathtaking views, places, and landscapes you've ever seen. Aside from that, what contributes to its uniqueness is the collaboration with 70 artists 
from all around the world whose art represents the beauty of our country from different points of view. So, as I mentioned, we have built it, the world community of artists with the aim to create a, a collaborative project in the future. So, um, I would like to uh, answer and what really we try to present in this collection um, is that in an interesting way and interactive way, so the whole project was present, uh, so the whole project was presented as a fairy tale. I will not reveal all the details so that the magic does not disappear. So if you have not looked at our collection so far, I invite you to do so after uh, this panel. Thank you, Nicolina. Uh, Robert, the uh, minister mentioned the promotion of uh, uh, tourism offer is one of the top priorities of uh, her government. Tina spoke about the set of uh, occupations uh, for which standards were de developed that are in place. Nicolina is telling us that you know young people are already looking for and finding obviously their place in tourism. So uh, you're coming from the UK and uh, a few years ago you started with a new I would call it platform, uh, New Deal Europe. Uh, you have already organized several uh, events. Uh, can you tell, tell us what, what actually made you decide to work and fo focus uh, on a Balkan country specifically? What do, you, what do you see as a gap between uh, what Balkan countries are currently doing in terms of promotion and what international market might be looking for? That's a big question. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, and thank you for inviting me um, from the UK, as you mentioned, um, it's a real honor to be here and to be a kind of honorary Balkan person today. So thank you. I'm, I'm feeling the weight of responsibility already. Um, yeah, new, I'll, I'll tell you how we started New Deal Europe, a, a, a little story, and that will probably explain, I think, why we exist and what we're doing in the Balkans. So I have a business partner, Tina. He's in the audience with me. He's the former director of the Slovenian Tourism Board in London. And both of us were at a trade fair, a European trade fair. Um, interestingly, Mladen earlier on was saying that uh, you are part of Europe, but often overlooked, um, and you want to be more part of Europe. Well, at this event, I would say there were around 200, 250 supplier delegates from all across Europe. And with the exception of the city of Athens, who were also present, Tina and I were the only two people representing uh, companies from the Balkan region, mm -hmm. which is pretty criminal. Mm -hmm. And we felt that uh, the region was very underrepresented, yet as you saw from all the statistics at the beginning of the day, the area of the world, and certainly the area of Europe, that's seeing the biggest increases in tourism pre-pandemic and even post-pandemic from the, the statistics we saw earlier, is this region, it's the Balkans. Uh, so uh, you need to get out there and promote more, and that's where we thought, hey, there's an opportunity here. Um, we should be able to organize a similar event to what we were at, a trade fair, connecting people and businesses, and just focus it on the Balkan region. So uh, we came up with this idea. I must admit, I'm being honest with you, drink was involved, so it probably wasn't a very sound idea at that time, and we did retire to a pub afterwards, and on the back of a beer mat, we kind of made a business plan. Um, but then I found out many of the best businesses have started that way too, so we take comfort in that. The next morning we met up and said, have we done the right thing? We were totally convinced we were, and New Deal Europe was born. And our aim is to promote tourism to this region. So if I can steal a little bit from the RCC logo that we've been seeing all day, um, the Balkans, we live it, that's what we do. And we love it, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we love it wholeheartedly. I'm, I've been a Balkanophile since the 1980s. Um, my first job in tourism was here uh, as a bodic on the jewels of Yugoslavia uh, tour for Cosmos Tourama. So my history here goes back a long way. And as you can see, the lights here um, are very harsh mm -hmm. and very unforgiving. And you can all see, I guess, <laughs> that I've been around in this industry for quite a long time. Yeah. The face tells the story. So I've built up over 35 years or so a very extensive network of contacts. And uh, between myself and Tina, we thought we had uh, the skill set, the knowledge, the experience, and the contacts to pull together uh, a travel trade event. And we did. Uh, unfortunately, 
uh, the first event was cancelled because of COVID, and we had to reinvent uh, the event as a, a virtual event, one of the first travel trade virtual events. But it's since proved to be very successful. So if I look at our event last year, uh, we had 200 buyers coming from 38 countries globally at our virtual event, and they were making connections and doing business with 150 tourism suppliers from across the Balkan region. And that had never happened before. Mm. And uh, as a result of those connections that we've made and the profile that we've built up, we thought we, we're not actually trade fair organizers. That's not what our expertise is. We needed partners to do that. Our expertise is in consultation. It's in representation. So we built New Deal Europe, as you say, as a platform for selling the Balkans. So we offer services that include consultation, representation, education, uh, uh, and that's educating the travel trade and people in universities, all the things that you're talking about earlier. Um, and we do a lot of work with media. We write blogs, our weekly blogs, where we interview people in this region or people producing business to this region, asking for their perspective, how they see tourism in the future, a very big focus on sustainability, which has been mentioned a lot today. You can follow that on medium.com. Just look for New Deal Europe and you'll be able to see all of our interviews. If anybody wants to be interviewed, please contact us at the end. Um, and then finally, the events. The events happen now two days in a year, uh, a live and a virtual event. And that means we've got 363 other days to do all the other things for the Balkans. So I was very interested to hear from many of the ministers today that the, uh, and the mayor of Tirana that you want to promote the Balkans on a bigger stage. In recent years, your business has come, largely due to COVID, from the neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And that's quite comfortable. But you want to also to get business from America, I heard. I heard Asia and Japan mentioned uh, today. And that's a very big challenge. Um, and you haven't currently got the infrastructure to do that. And you haven't got the tourism representation to do that. So please use us as much as possible, because we're out there doing that job for you already. Um, it's, it's a massive opportunity for you, and it will bring many challenges. Ta some of the challenges that you mentioned regarding cultural differences mm -hmm. and making sure that people understand the cultural differences of the markets that you want to attract is crucial. And if that's not done correctly, that leads to many uh, bad impressions. Mm -hmm. Because you know, as if, if I can come out with a quotation for a moment, uh, my, one of my favorites uh, is by Maya Angelou, and she said, the American poet laureate, she said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you do. But people will never forget how you make them feel. And if you get the cultural mm -hmm. differences right, and you provide the right service, and again, this is all down to training, if you do all of those things, people will go away with a great feeling. They'll be posting about you on Instagram. They'll be telling all their friends and your business here uh, for tourism will flourish. Thank you, Robert. So we heard uh, from Tina about the uh, already existing regional occupational standard. Uh, Nicolina uh, was telling us about the, you know, young people uh, eagerness uh, to get involved in tourism and uh, they're coming up with a new pro product. Uh, Robert, Robert explained uh, about uh, various uh, ways to use to promote this region. We also heard from previous speakers about uh, alarming figures of uh, people uh, declaring that they would like to leave the, this country. So uh, at one side, we do have a problem with people uh, wanting to leave the country and uh, countries or regions. On the other side, we do have a, a problem with uh, getting more people involved with the tourism. Minister Haidari, could you tell us uh, what, I mean, what, what's your opinion or your insights into the situation related to the human resources in uh, Kosovo, for instance? Thank you for your question. Uh, human resource in Kosovo is the most valuable resource for, for development. And having received the highest ratings on showing excellent hospitality, and being friendly with tourists in surveys conducted with international visitors proves our welcoming nature first. And just uh, how it was just concluded from my previous uh, uh, speaker, uh, how do you make them feel? It's every rating about Kosovo, a very welcoming country thanks to people of Kosovo with a very warm hospitality culture. 
But in addition, we have to do more, as uh, statistics show that number of employees by 2021 is uh, resulting to, to an increase. Just in 2021 is about 21,862, in mainly in accommodation and catering activities. And this accounts for about 6% of the entire workforce in Kosovo. So traditionally, we excel at the virtue of being welcoming people, but we need also to build more on the competence. And therefore, uh, Kosovo uh, is working now through this system of government that we are setting uh, more on closer cooperation between the private sector and education sector, mainly vocational education, through a new law for Chamber of Commerce that will certify more on the new competences among businesses, but also upgrade of the vocational education system, mainly the VET system, due to some profiles that are not aligning with the industry needs, not with the sector needs of tourism and so on. So yes, they need to build on the uh, aligning uh, with the industry needs of tourism and other, other profiles, but also uh, to bring a standard for, for a more uh, good service in the country, because we have maybe everything, but sometimes the competence that the warm welcome needs to be more in professional uh, way of, of uh, interpretation. So we could uh, also build more on the cooperation with other regions like universities as for tourism that are in different uh, uh, cities of the countries in the Western Balkans, in addition to our school uh, system that we have for tourism uh, development, mainly in management and other other competence universities that offer bachelor and master programs. They, in addition to management and tourism, hotels, cultural heritage, uh, they need also to bring more new competences and uh, adapt to more new curricula. Uh, new programs therefore need to be developed for this sector because the demand is increasing. And tourism was not much in surface in the policy development so far. It was just the unit in this ministry, but now we have upgraded the, the uh, structure of the ministry to a department and with new strategy and new law, we will, we will bring more uh, instruments to support the tourism uh, sector in Kosovo. Great, that's nice to hear. Uh, now, speaking about the uh, different jobs in tourism, I mean, I personally get fascinated about all kinds of jobs that people come up with, you know, they create their jobs. I mean, especially young, uh, young generation. So, I mean, uh, you'll, you will probably hear more about that uh, during the fourth panel because that's a creative industry panel and uh, they will present some of the cases. But Nicolina, can, can you tell us, I, when looking at your website, actually I noticed a group of uh, very young people with very strange position name that uh, don't say anything to me. How did you find uh, uh, these uh, young people? Uh, did, were they already trained? Did you train them? On, I mean, how, how did they get engaged with the uh, business? Thank you for the question. So when we started cooperating with our colleagues, actually the only thing that was important to us um, was that they had desire to learn. We are aware that very little was known and actually is known now about this new modern technology and that it would take time to learn. So we tried to provide time to provide them proper um, education. So now we have a team of 11 people, including uh, me and my uh, colleague Stefan, which we are uh, founders. So the other private sector faces each year the same problem. So we face these problems every year especially because of what the summer tourist season in Montenegro brings. And employees are shrug, struggling, excuse me, uh, with it in various ways. So we are aware that it is impossible to have full stop, educate and develop it throughout the year. So it may be necessary to look at how countries, some countries, as a good example, such as Norwegian, deal with this problem. Just one of the solutions would be to organize more employment fairs. Mm -hmm. What is our recommendation is not to wait for the last moment to organize it, but to prepare at a serious level until a few mo months before the summer season actually starts. 
So the difficulty finding of a worker is, re is uh, reflected not only in providing good conditions, but also in the impossibility of finding a worker who wants to develop his or her skills. Mm -hmm. We had cases uh, where the employer would have wanted to pay for the training of a worker to gain some new skills, but simply workers were not interested and would rather choose some tasks that did not bring too much of uh, responsibility. So we are constantly in that circle. People say that they can find jobs and employers can find workers. We know that work and travel program has been very popular in past years, as has the student exchange program for Germany. Also, the neighboring country, Croatia, offers excellent conditions for workers from, for, from our country. And many of our young people will choose to spend the season working in Croatia rather than staying in, in their own country. So young people will choose to stay. The choose to stay are impatient, and they can take on some leader, and they think they can take on some leadership skills and positions right away. So it is really necessary to have a lot of patience and sources of education to develop the skills of their workers. So um, what we always suggest to our partners, what is the problem is that very few companies get involved in discussing. The example I mentioned early, earlier is a very rare example when they actually want to invest. There are mm -hmm. few companies that have their own processes and systems for staff education. Once employed, the rule work is done on further education and training. So what our private sector thinks is the ideal scenario in tourism is to hire workers a few days before the peak of the season, which therefore, uh, therefore requires less cost uh, for paying salaries. And we are aware, aware of what that leads to. Uh, we cannot expect that someone who comes immediately knows everything, but it should be obligation of the company to provide proper training. In this way, the person who is progressing is happier and he has a greater desire and satisfaction to stay and work in the same place. If you work with someone constantly and the employee sees that the worker is progressing and therefore his business is progressing, the worker should pay be uh, the worker should be paid more, and he will create greater value. Someone wants to hire for only three months, and they actually um, employees meet those people earlier because of their education. If we hire them at last minute, we face a big problem that they did not have time to learn and prepare. An even worse scenario is when one person does multiple jobs, and that is very popular in our country. So that leads us to have guest, uh, dissatisfied guests, bad reviews, which is normal because one person cannot do everything on their own. So a great example is uh, what we actually saw in Dubai and our luxury places could uh, do on the same principle. One person is educated and specialized just for one kind of a job. And earlier in Montenegro, employers paid very little and expected him to know everything. So what we think is the state can help by investing more often in education for staff in the tourism sector. And I want to conclude with something very important. I what I always remind our, and advise our part partners to remember. So what legendary American author Ziegler said, you don't build business, you build people, and then they build business. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tina, Nicolina mentioned several uh, issues actually related to the um, occupations, uh, vocation and education and, you know, uh, the interlinkages and differences. Uh, we spoke earlier about uh, uh, what, what your organization is doing and uh, I, I personally uh, never thought about that. But there is uh, actually, uh, at least formally or in documents, a uh, difference uh, between uh, recognition of qualifications for uh, work and uh, that for uh, edu uh, education, further education. Can you explain us a bit about that? Um, yes, um, so first of all, uh, maybe just a little bit about what a qualification is. So it's, it's like a document which certifies that you have, um, you have qualified to do something that is prescribed by the education program. So it can be a diploma, it can be a certificate, different types of, of let's say, evidence of your uh, competencies. 
So when you talk about qualifications, they can be from various levels, secondary school, vocational school, higher education. But here for the purposes of this particular gathering, I will just focus on the higher education uh, qualifications because uh, the majority of, um, let's say, recognition happens in this particular area. So what you mentioned is uh, the two types of recognition in the higher education uh, field. One is for employment, which means that um, you have a qualification and you take it with you to go to another um, country, another economy, to work. And then you can do two things. You can have uh, this qualification uh, recognized by specialized agencies, specialized centers which deal with that. Or if the, your employer doesn't require that, you don't have to do that. So in this case, the employer has the authority to say, I trust you, I like your qualification, I like the degree that you finished, it's okay, you can start working tomorrow. So it's really in the hands of the employer. However, if you want to continue education, so for example, you finished a master and you want to continue a doctoral degree in another economy, another country, then you need to have your qualification recognized. And this is the job of universities or faculties. So they will decide, yes, this is okay, or no, you need to take another exam, and so on. So this is the basic difference. So basically there is a room actually for private sector to, to regulate uh, uh, standards for yes. uh, occupations that they and need. And this is very important, um, especially in the area of so-called regulated professions, because there are certain regulations which are heavily regulated, such as, for example, doctors of medicine, architects, so you cannot just move around. So you really need to, to have your qualification um, recognized according to very strict principles that will actually justify that you can start working in uh, different countries. Uh, uh, and this is then done usually by chambers or in combination with chambers of a particular trade with some other government institutions. Thank you. Robert, what could you say from experience uh, and speaking about the uh, competencies and skills uh, of uh, people working in tourism from this region? Uh, how would you assess uh, their uh, adjusting to international market demands, uh, being ready to use digit digital tools as much as, uh, as, uh, as possible or as uh, required? Well, I was very interested by what Nicolina was saying there about uh, her experience when people are thrown in at the deep end with uh, very little training, uh, particularly because you're from the luxury sector, uh, sector, Nicolina. And I've been selling luxury hotels, uh, some species of Addison hotels, but not exclusively, um, for many years. And this, this was a constant problem. I can well remember, um, I'm sure many of you know this hotel, the Sun Gardens Resort in Dubrovnik mm. opening um, probably over 10 years ago now. And I was the leisure expert in Radisson Hotel, so I was sent down there to do a kind of mystery shopper uh, report on how the hotel was operating. Um, the general manager had come from a city hotel and wasn't used to dealing with um, leisure market, let alone the, the, the challenges of a resort hotel. And it, it really was um, a big challenge for a hotel company that was specialized in cities to open a resort hotel. So I'm not blaming them. There are the, they had those issues to contend with. But the staff were clearly not very well trained because just very basic things that would make the guests feel very comfortable were missing. Uh, firstly, attitude. You know, people were just standing around looking miserable in the restaurant rather than serving people you know, with a smile. Tables were left uncleared. So you were sitting having your breakfast or your dinner surrounded by empty tables and, and, and people just weren't engaged in, in what their job was. And I think that was really an issue, not necessarily with the, the people who um, had come in and got the waiting job, but those above them who were responsible for training them. And I think you've got not just got to look at, at the, the public facing people doing the service on the front line, but you've got to look also at the management level. Um, and the next level up. So what you know, is, have you got the right management in place? Have you got the right structures and the right reporting lines? Because all that really needed uh, was somebody managing the restaurant better. But I've seen it in so many other hotels, and you've clearly seen it, Nicolina, in Montenegro, if, if that's a, a problem that's cropping up all of the time. Um, somebody mentioned earlier on about uh, how welcoming these countries are, and I feel that all the time. I love coming here because I, I'm always made to feel very welcome. You're, you're so hospitable. 
and I know that everybody here wants to make all of the guests very welcome. Um, and they just need pointing in the right direction uh, in order to deliver that, that type of service. Um, in the UK, we have s similar things to what you're talking about, but, uh, where we have apprenticeship programs now. When I, when I started in tourism, um, I was said I was doing this body each job. And then I left that to go into university to do a, a secondary higher qualification, a post degree level uh, in tourism. And at the time in the UK, there were only three universities that could offer that type of qualification. One in Scotland, one in Manchester, and Surrey University where I went to. Now, there's a whole lot more. And in addition to the universities, we have uh, on-the-job training through the mm -hmm. apprenticeship program. And the apprenticeship program in the UK is organized almost identically to the way that you're, you're wanting it to happen here, where the standards are set by people within the industry. So the, the government pays for the apprenticeships. Uh, it supports the industry with apprenticeships. But you know, the government can only do so much, and it does have to be a partnership between public and private sector here, because the government can provide the framework, it can provide the educational qualifications, but they don't do what we do as tourism professionals. And so, uh, and uh, across the board with all of these uh, apprenticeships, the way it's organized is that there's a group of industry professionals called trailblazers who establish what those standards should be, and at the end of their apprenticeship training, all the apprentices are examined against this common set of standards. Mm -hmm. And then they're given the certification, which is recognized uh, across the whole industry and across the whole country. And it's not just at a, you know, apprenticeship level coming straight out of school. We also have uh, level six and level sen seven apprenticeships, which are degree level apprenticeships. Uh, so there are a number of companies in the UK that are sponsoring those type of opportunities. And again, the government pays um, for the, the companies to take part in these apprenticeships, and they're proving very popular because uh, you know, tuition fees in the UK are very expensive, and it's a way in which young people can come into the industry and start earning straight away, and at the same time, mm -hmm. get great qualifications. And I don't know if that's the kind of model you're looking at, but it, it certainly works very well in the UK. Yeah. In terms of the digital element that you mentioned, um, Let's go back to when we st I, I said we started New Deal Europe and our first event uh, was cancelled because of COVID. We can it was cancelled one week before it was due to go ahead was in March 2020 because our, our country went into lockdown. It was a live event, a B2B meetings event. And I'll be honest, n not everybody who was coming to it actually understood what we were trying to do because they'd been to things like ITV and World Travel Market and their experience was they went to travel trade fairs um, and either they knew a few people and they invited them to have meetings or they waited for things to happen and people to come to them uh, at, at their desk. And we were providing a completely different service where we were inviting buyers and suppliers to connect and we would make those connections and organize meetings for them and they would have a full diary of meetings one-to-one. -one. And when it moved virtually, I said we were one of the first um, companies to do that, to offer a virtual trade fair. In honesty, people didn't understand it. I kind of didn't understand it myself because this was pre-Zoom days. You know, we've all been Zoomed out and we've been webinared out since 2020. But back then, this was all very new. Um, and we had faith in our uh, travel trade provider to deliver this type of service. And it was fantastic. And everybody who came had a great time. But um, people didn't understand what a, a digital travel trade fair would deliver. And as a result, we had many cancellations from people who thought it was going to be a TV show or a lot of webinars, and it wasn't going to be this interaction um, and exchange of information leading to business. But that, that's changed. Obviously, we've all you know, embraced the Zoom, uh, Teams, Google Meet, whatever it is, environment that we're all working in now. Um, but there's a, there's a big lack of digitalization across the whole uh, of the industry, particularly here in the Balkans, because it relies on a lot of investment. And many of the companies who provide the digital solutions will only work with people who've got a certain turnover. And the smaller businesses are therefore left behind. And I think there does need to be some support from government for those SMEs yes. who are struggling to get the digitalization that they need in order to be competent in this very digital world. Yeah. Thank you. That's why they say tourism has capacity to transform societies. 
But uh, listening to Nicolina and uh, Robert uh, uh, saying about you know people not realizing the the importance of having a good uh, attitude uh, when uh, providing service, I wonder, Minister Haidari, do you think that generally uh, speaking, population is uh, aware of all the benef benefits uh, that tourism can bring? Because uh, somehow I think that people uh, very often don't link certain occupations to tourism. For instance, we have young people working on many different things, not realizing it is part of the tourism. They're just treating it as, I don't know, creative uh, game or something like, like that. So, Minister Haidari, do you think general population is uh, ve well aware of that, or you think uh, there should be done more on uh, increasing their awareness of uh, tourism uh, benefits? Thank you, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I see that uh, our people, our civil society, thanks to some uh, development cooperation projects, uh, starting with good initiatives in, uh, let's say, Via Generica program that is more on regional development and other initiatives in tur tourism, they see that it's an opportunity for job creation, especially for youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also are very more active uh, nowadays, like just when going to Girofastra city, uh, having the example of how old that city is and how many tourists is having nowadays is thanks to you, thanks to digital tools to promote the uh, tourism uh, attractions of the city, but also thanks to investment of a state that was giving up to uh, many millions to uh, upgrade the streets and roofs of the old houses and so on, it became very attractive uh, city. So th there are many opportunities through the uh, unique uniqueness of different cities from the region, from different countries. It's becoming more attractive, the sector, and that is, that is thanks to initiatives of youth that are bringing forward uh, through uh, uh, joint efforts in, let's say, walking through mountains or going in other rural areas through uh, through uh, guest uh, houses and tasting the gastronomy and going through artisans. But of course, it's more a need for information for for uh, sharing the values of each uh, countries among uh, among themselves, like uh, what we can offer, what we can complement other countries in terms of this uh, joint offer or and, and branding for from branding of each country. It's a need also to build on the competence. We see that uh, human resource uh, were not offered enough in terms of school and competence building, especially in our country, because vocational education system did not uh, improve much compared to other uh, states maybe, but we have given a high focus due to the need for uh, for industry development. In, in this purpose, we have given the focus to this ministry to change in even its name to Ministry of Industry, starting with industry uh, name and then going to entrepreneurship and, and trade. Entrepreneurship is the key to bring stakeholders in terms of uh, promotion of all the, the values that will the, uh, the country will bring forward. Uh, one important aspect that I see when youth are active, uh, government is to bring more space for, for their creative, uh, creative, uh, creative ideas they have. Therefore, entrepreneurship and innovation funding Kosovo is one of the instruments that is going to provide them more space for, for uh, promotion of uh, of in this case tourism sector but also other industry sectors uh, we need knowledge transfer especially for uh, our labor force but also technology transfer if we want to transform the industry of the country and tourism is one of the opportunities that could be like a precondition for for other sectors because when when only they come as a tourist in in kosovo they can get involved in other sectors it's much more different compared to what is the perception of the country uh, in, in terms of comparison with the reality of the country. And that is, I think, in common for all countries. Western Balkan don't have enough uh, information for the potential that we really can offer for more uh, opportunities for European industries, 
not only tourism but also other tourism for, for human resource is the solution to thanks to real proactiveness and government to ensure good system good legislation but also good infrastructure for and good education which is the key for for human resource uh, for them so it's more a need for knowing for each other's value we we get surprised often even from each other's as different countries of the western balkans like i start with myself then visit uh, visiting different cities about uniqueness so i think it's a need for more information sharing and more of learning from uh, different programs that have brought the the tourism like Monte montenegro's good success stories albanians and other other countries in terms of tourism development it's amazing seeing how uh, some countries in the region has worked so so fast uh, so hard and uh, moved so fast in terms of tourism development i would say kosovo has a good opportunity to uh, to develop culture in tourism and also to build on competence of of people because people are the one who have the energy the potential and the positiveness for especially for tourism development thank you minister unfortunately we, we need to uh, bring this to an end Tina, I would just uh, uh, like to ask you one question. In your work uh, on the reform of educational system, uh, have you, uh, what have you noticed? Has tourism been paid uh, uh, sufficient attention? Has it been included in uh, uh, your activities and how, to what extent? Yes, uh, just let me very briefly reflect to one thing that Robert mentioned, which is uh, the um, increasing involvement of businesses in education part. So they do understand more and more their relevance and their responsibility in shaping the future work. So there are many different, um, uh, let's say, dual education or work-based learning programs happening in the region, and, and it's a really positive thing. And uh, tourism has indeed been um, uh, recognized by everybody as mm -hmm. a very potential sector. And not only tourism as, um, let's say, a lone sector, but also in combination with other sectors. So we have also identified that there is a need in agricultural industry, which is also an industry which is shared by the region, that there is a potential of um, increasing their skills, so the skills and competencies of, uh, we call them agriculture technicians, to um, be uh, uh, more aware of the organic production. So there are more and more little farms, uh, mm -hmm. little like uh, households that deal with agriculture products and they need the skills to learn how to produce those basic food products that they can then deliver further on to their guests, to, uh, to visitors and so on. So I think this is also one area of tourism which is very important for, for the region and where we are also trying to focus our interest in. Yes, obviously there are many, many initiatives across the region actually uh, done by different organizations, different ministries, and or are you know, either direct, directly or indirectly tackling tourism and improving situation in tourism sector. So as Minister Haidari said, uh, uh, there needs to be probably uh, uh, better uh, information sharing uh, or more frequent information sharing to make sure that everybody knows what's available and where. We don't need you know, to create our own curricula in each uh, uh, country. We can I don't know, replicate or use yeah, teachers sure. from another mm -hmm. uh, country or region, uh, region etc. Robert, uh, before we end, I would like to ask each of participants to, uh, to put in one or two sentences what would be their like, uh, priority in uh, human resources, not only development, but keeping people here. You know, what would you say to especially young generation? What should be a reason for them not to leave this region but stay here well, and use we, tourism as a... Yeah, I think we need to, to give them incentives. And, uh, you know, the, it's a big challenge here because there's a, uh, an issue in tourism uh, across the world. In, in my country, for instance, if I, g I give you a, a quite a shocking statistic, the World Travel and Tourism Council at the end of last year published their annual report in the UK alone, there were 200,000 unfilled vacancies in the travel and tourism sector. So it's not an issue that, you know, they're finding the right people, developing them and, and, and make, making them versatile uh, so that they can be flexible in many different roles and they can develop careers in tourism. 
is fantastic and having the right human resource management in place to identify those people and give them those opportunities and the right management to understand people's motivations is, is very important. But you know, uh, let's all recognize that it's a very big challenge right now and it's not an easy job. And we do need as much support from government as possible. I, I appreciate all the things that have been mentioned today about the lower tax regime and the support uh, for initiatives like youth, uh, like what you're doing, uh, Tina. Um, but it is a big challenge everywhere. And you're not unique in that. So don't feel that, <laughs> that in it's a very big mountain. And if you're not getting to the top, that you're failing. You're not. We're all in this together. And we're all feeling uh, the pain of, of what's happening post-COVID. On the positive side, may I say that um, at our event last month, we, we did a live and a virtual event. And unfortunately, she's not here anymore. Uh, she was here this morning. Cornelia from the Albanian Tourism Board took the opportunity to present Albania on the stage to uh, all the delegates that were there at the live event. And we recorded it and showed it at the, uh, the virtual event. We survey every element of what we do in our events, um, whether that's you know, uh, the B2B meetings down to uh, the quality of the food at lunchtime. Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing that got the most positive response I've ever seen was Cornelia's pr presentation on Albania. Mm -hmm. That was far and away the thing that most people reacted and related to very positively. And why? It's because you're still relatively unknown here. Mm -hmm. And she was presenting information to people for the first time on what a fantastic destination Albania is. And I could say the same for the whole of the Western Balkans. There's a huge opportunity here. As people have said earlier, um, people, we want to make this a sustainable and responsibly uh, managed destination. You need to keep it local. Uh, you need to keep it, importantly, very authentic. Don't try and reinvent mm -hmm. things and change things. You know, there was talk about getting all these five-star hotels in Tirana. We've already seen from Michalina the challenges of uh, staffing five-star hotels and delivering the five-star service. Do what you do best. Do it really well. Focus on training the individuals that you've got already um, and deliver the service that will mean people will come back. And that's the advice I would give. Thank you. Minister Haidari, what would you say before uh, we finish this? Unfortunately, we need to finish this. <laughs> we can't hear you. I would just uh, conclude that uh, in my side, that as many studies after COVID are showing the potentials of uh, near shoring in Western Balkans, it is a lot that uh, we could complement each other and uh, provide an offer to tourism and other sectors of industry and develop the, the countries and the region in more sustainable way, but also uh, bring more uh, proactiveness of the private sector because they are the changers. Uh, if they are not active, we will not, we will not improve much in terms of human uh, development. And I would, I would conclude that in our country, it is thanks to private sector who uh, really has a great merit in the development of the tourism offer. They were very proactive so far because they, they are attacking sustainable economic development while the, the government is working on uh, support for providing legal and physical infrastructure. And I hope for more financial support after the strategy, but let's see what we can complement each other for uh, near showing potentials in the country, also for investment uh, in tourism. I often offer to strategic investors the destinations for tourism development in the country when they look at public-private partnership uh, instruments and more for near showing uh, investment in the country since we have the lowest tax regime in the country in the in Europe, I would say Kosovo, offering a stability of uh, uh, currency, euro currency, and human resource and EU legislation, Kosovo legislation in line with EU legislation, stabilization of situation process. All these are uh, potentials and preconditions that ensure uh, every intervention, rather uh, either for tourism development or other sectors that money works for uh, investors, but also it's a good comfort uh, 
feeling for all uh, comers, all invest, uh, all tourists in the country, in in any region, here in Western Balkans. So, I really encourage uh, value chain integration among the Western Balkan ships and have in future a joint offer for uh, for tourism destination of uh, the Balkans or Southeast Europe. I uh, was very happy to to join this discussion and learn from each others, especially from Robert and from other speakers who were uh, speaking from Montenegro and Tina Saric. I don't know if she is here because I see her name, but I didn't. She is. Thank I'm you, here. Minister. Ni Nicolina, uh, uh, she's still with us. Yeah. yeah, I'm here and I'll be very short. What I want to say and to repeat what I already mentioned, it's very important. Invest in young people, be aware of their potential, invest in their education, and strive to make as good as possible atmosphere for them. The results will not miss for sure. Thank you, Nicolina. Uh, thank you uh, to all participants uh, for uh, participating in this uh, panel, uh, sharing your insights and knowledge with us. We would uh, probably uh, be able to talk for hours about this. Should any of you have any questions, we will be around uh, afterwards till tomorrow, so please feel free to approach exchange contacts and everything. Al thank Alexander, you. Alexander, can I mm -hmm. say one, just to of echo course. what the minister was saying. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're, we're up here and we're, we're giving our opinions and our views and our advice. But what I've really benefited from in the last 24 hours is listening to the stories that you're telling me um, and the information that you're giving me. And let's continue the exchange, as you say, beyond this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
syntax is like the glass of a window. When everything is fine, you see the view, but when something breaks, you see the glass. I have, in, in, in the course of a day, I have uh, scrubbed the content of the newspaper, so I cleansed the newspapers uh, with the spirit in order to, to, to delete all the bad news from the newspaper of the day. Certain things are marginal, maybe to the, yes, as you say, to the, to the great narrative, but um, over time certain things become monumental. At that point in my life I was reconsidering the, the, the whole this uh, moment of my youthness that um, I really left inside of me as some sort of fear um, that I have to deal with. Un sikur msaj shumë gjana mbi veten. Êshtë një loj do pjo balafacim me sa saj diskutimit tim eti dhe ate që du më ba unë për të rritën. I would say I use blue for different reasons because first of all I think blue allows you to speculate a lot and blue also as a color have been gone through different meanings and metaphors through the progressive history. I believe very sincerely that uh, you can change the world with your action, with the art. Um, thank you very much for staying so late in the day for our creative industries group. Um, my name is Martin Kapp. I'm a complicated background. I'm British, Serbian, and South African. Um, and I work specifically in creative industries and tourism and trying to work out ways how to bridge the gap uh, between the two and how to use creative industries specifically to stimulate um, tourism activity. Um, I have a panel of experts from around the region. I'll, uh, Dusan Kasalitsa. Uh, who is a film director from Montenegro, winner of the Hot Sarajevo Award. Um, over the far side, I don't know if the screens are keeping up with this. Um, we have uh, Anissa Loya, excuse me, my voice is going. Um, it just happened to go right at the end of the day. Um, who is going to be taking us on a walking tour later on on some of the cultural and heritage highlights in Tirana, but has a long... Um, list of experience in, in cultural, creative sector, heritage, um, including um, cultural hubs and um, even crafts, stores for craft goods. So um, some very interesting ideas to bring to the table. And um, Mac Maranovic, I just managed to lose it, Maranovic, um, who has uh, the Young Sarajevo Street Art Tours and takes uh, tourists on um, guided tours of street art in Sarajevo, but also um, has built festivals around this notion. So, I mean, essentially, I'm going to start with each of them, and very briefly, we'll start with Mac, um, to say, you know, t tell us a bit more about how the creative side of the business is directly connected into tourism. I guess what I'm hoping from the end of this is that we'll give you some ideas of the kinds of uh, some, some inspiration into how um, you can grasp opportunities that exist from creative act actors. Um, so let's let's start with what what is the street art tour and how how did it come about? Yep. So thank you, firstly, Mr. Martin, for your kind words, and thank you for inviting me to this conference. I'm really thrilled of probably being the youngest fella at the moment in the room. When it comes to art. And tourism, we have to, of course, know that art is, the first step is about the creativity, and that's our mission that we were trying to, to introduce in Sarajevo. Uh, when it comes to Sarajevo and the art, I would, and the tourism especially, I would say that um, we are facing a huge problem. Not only, I think, about Sarajevo, you would agree with me that usually this area over here is a little bit close-minded, but art is breaking, of course, those uh, steps in creativity and trying to be more uh, open-minded. Our mission uh, about art and tours and about the art tourism was, of course, to be the bond between art and tourism, but trying to show some other perspectives of Sarajevo. Usually, 
when you would do some tours in Sarajevo uh, with any company or any tour guide who's working as a freelancer or so on, usually people would be sad about Sarajevo. Usually people would hear the statistic that also could be founded online. <laughs> but we try to put some colors in, in all of this, that topic and trying to be, of course, as much creative as we could. That is one of the creativity and the best thing w was the actually the street art festival that was held on the 28th of 26th of uh, June 2021 uh, last year and it lasted for two weeks. It was a regional festival that we expected of a small number of people that could join but at the end we were really thrilled with all of these numbers. And uh so let me I'm going to interrupt yeah. quick. So sure. Essentially, what you've done is taken the desire to paint on walls exactly. Exactly. and turned it into a tourism program that is not only able to drive ad hoc visitors around the city on a, you know, exactly. who are there on a daily, you know, on a on other reasons possibly, but you've also turned it into a festival exactly. that now spread way beyond Sarajevo and off to other cities as well. Exactly, that's right, and. Um, we tried also with that festival to help in psychologically, like we said, that people would gather, that they would be more open-minded in the concept of, of course, art and, and tourism. Uh, but we also helped the ecology because uh, every mural that we do in the city is actually sending some, uh, sending some picture, but also telling some story. The first thing that we did was a live street mural because a huge, big problem about Sarajevo is about the ecology, about the air pollution. At the end, we connected another thing uh, with the festival was that we will not do a live tree, but we will do something again about the ecology. What we did is that we founded the phrase that one square meter is actually the result of planting one tree. And um, so the outcome of helping not only about tourism, but also the ecology and helping about, like we said, mostly the psycho psychological aspects of, of the, um, all the audience in Sarajevo. What we did also is that we tried to make as much murals as we could from the first to the last kilometer of Sarajevo. All of these murals are not connected only about the art, but they are also connected with the history. And we are trying to show people on our tours uh, the works that we have done, which are connected with the art, with the history, and at the end with the mystery. Because no one who is a graffiti artist or a street artist would not tell you all about himself. Uh, that has to be also um, as a mystery. But uh, the outcome really about all of this uh, concept of art and tourism is really great. It's, uh, it's promoting more and more each year and um, uh, you see how and people I, I are. And I also want to come back, and um, we'll talk about this a yeah. lot with the film thing as well, is in terms of how this um, new way mm -hmm. of presenting a country through creative industry exactly. can change the dynamic of how that country is communicated. It becomes yep. really very much the new way of talking about, exactly. um, you know, it's <coughs> so no longer weekly Sarajevo, but now yep. fun, engaged, youthful Sarajevo. Exactly. I will take an example of the bobsled trek because usually when you would say about street art graffitis um, about Europe, you would mention Berlin due to the Berlin Wall. But for example, when you would mention Sarajevo, it's usually people would think about the siege, would think about some hard historical period. But you also have to know that Sarajevo has the biggest wall in Europe for the street art, which is actually that bobsled track. So you can learn about history also online, but art is something of creativity that will join you together uh, during these, these um, uh, tours. Right. And We're yeah, sure. going to come back. Uh, Dusha, let's... Um, my experience with the film industry is that you have two ways of pushing tourism activities. One is when you're moving your crews around and you're feeding them and you're um, you know, putting them up in hotels or whatever. And the other is when people come and visit afterwards. How, how do you approach that at all in your, in your filmmaking practice or is that a nice to have benefit that comes afterwards? What, how do you as a filmmaker interact with the tourism community? Uh, well, I believe that film industry is one of the biggest op opportunities to, to present country and to, to put it on a touristic map uh, and uh, to bring uh, what we try in these countries, basically uh, we, we try to, to bring uh, large pro productions 
uh, that are very important for the, the presenting the countries and the possibilities of working in these countries. So uh, national film centers usually uh, do a presentation like we have in Montenegro, uh, this whole campaign called Film in Montenegro that is presented, uh, that is presented throughout the uh, film market uh, at the film festival. And uh, they uh, uh, work very closely with national touristic organization offering all sorts of benefits like cash rebate for foreign producers, which basically means that 25% uh, of the invested money is returned to the foreign uh, producers or rather uh, presents uh, all the landscapes that uh, that country offers. Uh, what we do uh, on a lo locally, for example, I made a feature film that presented in a way uh, quite a bit of, uh, uh, I had uh, two locations at uh, this film, like one location is uh, Durmitor Mountain, uh, that we uh, shot uh, basically all uh, angles of that mountain and we offered a uh, diversity of that uh, location, uh, which implies that somebody who watched that uh, film can uh, further on uh, look for the location, for the possibilities maybe to come and visit. Uh, the bigger pr productions uh, in that sense are more important, I believe, for, for tourism because uh, we witness, for example, the example of the Game of Thrones TV show uh, that made uh, Dubrovnik's uh, top tourist uh, destination because, uh, first of all, as we know, TV uh, shows have royal uh, loyal uh, fo followers and people, in a way, want to uh, be in a place where uh, their characters have been, uh, want to take picture of that location, want to be present at that location, and want want to, in a way, like I believe, like they want to be a part of that TV show or, or of that content. Uh, we have the, uh, this this James Bond films, this Mission Impossible films, with all these kind of big budget films that really shape uh, location and shape the. Uh, the need to go there and to visit. So I think that's the, the first maybe and the main layer of, of uh, connection between film industry and, and uh, tourism. And I think it's interesting as well that, uh, it, you know, anyone in tourism is aware of influencing. And what you have with a film is essentially 90 minutes of influencing with some of your favorite people. Yeah, of course. I mean, at, uh, aesthetically, I, I, belie I believe aesthetic... Uh, uh, is very important in all of this. It's not just about uh, films or TV shows, it's uh, also uh, about uh, social networks. Like for example, Instagram has aesthetic on its own. Like, uh, and we witnessed during the pandemic, d for these two years, we've been uh, part of uh, Instagram and we traveled through Instagram. There is no, uh, infinitive uh, pages of Instagram that actually uh, promote for free uh, all kinds of destination. For example, I believe Italy made a miracle <laughs> about this because uh, what, we, uh, what aesthetically we do, uh, we imitate some kind of lifestyle. Like, uh, and that's what comes from, I believe, high art. Because uh, we witness, for example, Italy is a good example what cinematography done aesthetically to viewers and for tourist people because uh, uh, during the, uh, for with the films from the 60s or 70s, like the films of uh, Antonioni, Fellini, and so on, uh, in a way we saw, uh, we remember what it is like to live in Italy. And we, when we travel there, we want to imitate that kind of lifestyle. We want to, to drink Prosecco on a terrace in a sun on sunset or eat Italian food and to uh, be for five minutes maybe Sofia Loren or Marcello Mastroianni. And uh, what we do here, uh, basically on a everyday scale, we promote content freely. Every one of us who, are the, who has social networks, like uh, either uh, photographing uh, food from the restaurant or uh, some kind of streets in Tirana, I promote freely this city. And I also think one of the one of the things about creative and cultural tourism, and just as an aside, I think this is an interesting point that uh, that when Game of Thrones comes to film in your city, 
it's not necessarily a cultural tourism product that it emerges from it, but it's very much a creative industry product. So if, you know, th there are those are how I kind of divide up the, the ones that are have generated out of commercial activity and the ones that have generated out of pure cultural activity. But it, for me, uh, the other interesting thing about the particular tourism opportunity arising from film to start off with, but also from, from music and from art, are the fact that it's a long term, uh, you know, those films will appear in the cinema and then they will appear on the streaming services and on the national television and then you can download them at any time. And so you can be getting exposure for the destination from that for decades. Yes. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, exactly. But uh, uh, I think uh, uh, on, um, on one side, there is a commercial uh, side of the film, like you said, uh, Game of Thrones and so on, and, and the other is uh, culture. Uh, what we are doing in the regions, I, I think, for the past 20 or 30 years, is that we imitate uh, foreign practices. Like, we want to be maybe too Western. Uh, what I believe here is the potential is that we, uh, in the creative way and in, in a way what we are doing, what our narrative is, I believe we have to be more original. Uh, so we have to uh, create that kind of uh, pictures that people uh, who are watching films from Albania, Montenegro, Serbia or, or whatever uh, can remember that kind of content. In a, uh, like when we had the uh, Zoom uh, meeting, uh, we mentioned Almodovar. That was he done in uh, Spain uh, culture, Spanish culture. Uh, so with his film, uh, everybody, either somebody who watches film or somebody who doesn't watch films at all. But uh, for example, I think I believe everyone in this room knows songs from his film. And that's uh, a cultural exchange that he made. Or everybody knows uh, uh, his stars from films like Penelope Cruz or Javier Bardem. So uh, when we think about Spain, in a way, we think about his films, his uh, colors of his films, aesthetic of his films. And we, in a way, when we travel there, we want, in a way, to taste uh, some kind, to be part of that content. So uh, I think uh, here, locally, we have to do something like that in order to, to invite people to, to research our, our region and to research our culture, not just imitate uh, and to, if we are, uh, for example, if we are doing uh, art house films, we mostly imitate like films of Brother Bardem or we want to be uh, Tarantino, for example. Uh, so authenticity then authenticity comes back into exactly. being the one of the main things. Anita. Um, the work that yours been doing is very varied. Won't you explain um, the kinds of things that you've been trying to tackle uh, in the creative industries tourism space? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Um, it never, it didn't start as a anything having to do anything with tourism. We didn't think of it. We were naive enough uh, in 2014 to start a small business um, shop concept store, a collaborative space, because we knew a few artists, a few creatives who were interesting to us and we thought they didn't have the uh, exposure that they deserved and we felt Tirana had a climate that could welcome them. And um, so we opened with uh, a contract of six months, not having any other expectations, just see how far this can go. And it exceeded our expectations in many ways, but mostly because in less than six years of working, we collaborated with more than 200 creatives from Albania. And these are the yeses that we said, and there were a lot of no's, you're not ready yet, but come a little uh, afterwards. And throughout this process, uh, I think we, we realized the importance of what we were doing in the tourism uh, perspective. We, at some point, completely to our surprise, I must say again, uh, ended up in New York Times Travel Magazine. And there were a few businesses pointed out on what to do, what to see when you come in Tirana, and we were there. And 
once you haven't planned for that and you find yourself in that location, you start to ask yourself a lot of questions uh, of what you've done right and what you've done wrong and why you're there. And I think it has a lot to do with the authenticity that you were just mentioning, because once someone entered our shop, maybe Albanian or a, a foreign visitor, it wasn't meeting just us as shopkeepers. It was meeting the 200 creatives that were there. It was meeting the history of the family from Škodra who had been doing loom weaving for three generations. So all this storytelling, as, as you mentioned before, all these individual stories, and individu individual perspectives of the story and of the uh, values of, of our country, I think those were the ones that uh, attracted tourists. But um, for a number of reasons that were um, internal and external, um, some of them have to do with the business climate and what we faced at the time, luckily, is different from new, what new businesses uh, face now in Tehran, at least in the sector. Um, adding to uh, an earthquake that uh, we unfortunately had in 2019, followed by the pandemic, we realized it was impossible to continue with the structure that we had. And so we closed the shop and um, we again used that as a moment to ask ourselves a lot of questions on what was the true value of what it we had done. And we realized that um, these uh, people that we had gathered together and this network that we have created was one of the main components of our work. And we started to question ourselves on what more we could do and how we could strengthen this network. And that's when we realized that um, ourselves and them throughout this period have developed uh, new skills in entrepreneurship that we didn't have before. And we realized that that was, there was a huge gap in those who are creative, in those who have or not the training to produce something artistic, and in them then facing the market. And you do that in small fairs when you are a, in a shop, you do it with a day-to-day -day, uh, relationship with the client. But as the shop was not there anymore, we realized we could take all this experience and pack it as an incubator which we had to uh, have it online, as we were saying through the pandemic, we've had to change and adapt to being a lot more online than we were before. So for the last year, uh, throughout 2021, we had regular sessions with uh, different people, both uh, local and international, who were giving little lectures, little talks, little discussions, uh, aiming to um, strengthen or sparkle or um, move a little bit, shake a little bit the idea of whoever it is, this person that it's creating, maybe a movie director or a graffiti artist or this lady that just knits in her home after work on how they are actually producing something that has a value in the market and that makes them entrepreneurs and then they need to be prepared for this uh, relationship and new position. And we've all had discussion though about how, and I'm very interested in how the street art world sees this, on, on, on that monetization point and on the preparation, you know, what often with creative industry, cult, uh, cultural sectors, it is, a, and I like to knit in my home, I don't really have a great idea that this could be something that not only people locally will purchase, but tourists coming into the country will go, this is a great rep. So how do you, I mean, do you, how do you think that that can be better managed? I mean, is that stuff that can be built with education? Does that start right from school age? I would say from the workshop, surely. Uh, not only about the street art, but also the, like we, we had an idea about um, trying to keep the oldest art in Bosnia, which is the copper art. And we just understood that we are importing a lot of souvenirs from China, for example, and that just people would buy those souvenirs and life all over the world. But what we understood is that we need to help also the copper artists because uh, if you forget about your past, you will not have your future, right? So what we did is that we made a handicraft workshop that also the minister from Kosovo was telling about, uh, is that we are taking the tourists to one really young fella that they continue the tradition from his family, from his father, uh, in producing your own souvenir from Sarajevo, being creative and learning a lot of about the art connected with the history of that certain art. 
And I think this is an, an incredibly important part of the role that creative industries can have in the development of tourism products, okay. is that it's, n it's actually no longer just, I want to come and see copper being turned into a, a thing. Mm -hmm. So I want to join in the process and make yeah. with my hands. It's part of that experiential tourism trend that is now you know, one of the most important ones that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And that the typical representation of the whole city, of the whole art and the history of the city. Besides that, we are also taking people to the bobside track, like we said, the biggest wall in Europe, or the street art in order to introduce the street art. What I really liked about is that uh, you mentioned street art and graffiti uh, tour guides, which is, I think, the first <laughs> time that I'm hearing that someone is not saying that street art and graffiti are the same thing. And um, things that people are learning and, and being creative, especially under that workshop, uh, because imagine that you do some street art or you do the graffitis, like on a legal way as well. And how, how do the, the artists themselves monetize their participation in this? I mean, are you able to turn their work into postcards or posters or yeah. is that some, or is that something that would happen that you have in mind to happen in the future? Exactly. Uh, we are not only uh, showing people how to learn about the art, but we are also trying to promote our own art as well, which is usually through the pictures and um, through the murals that uh, we do. Because, uh, you know, if you are, let's say, a surfer and uh, you like to surf, you would surf for bigger waves, right? That's like artists who surf for bigger uh, walls in order to do that. And um, all of that is connected in a at the end of the result that we also enjoy in uh, different workshops and different creativity of making uh, those murals. So we are not only helping ourselves like individuals uh, in order to promote our art, but also the whole city of Sarajevo. And besides all, just imagine a city that was 1995, 95% uh, black and gray, if I can say, was being damaged. The, the first people that were actually putting this color mm -hmm. in the city were actually the, the street artists. I mean, you know, so for me, one of the exciting things about how creative industries contribute directly into tourism is how um, it inspires it. So it's not, again, it's not just the product itself. It can inspire other products that are inspired by. And I'm, I have a little anecdote that I love to share about the Northern Ireland Tourism Board with Game of Thrones. And they, there is a poster of that did the rounds of Game of Thrones of the, of it's called the Dark Hedges and it's a row of trees that meet over the Northern Ireland. And it was on screen for seven seconds. Um, but it was very, because it appeared in all of the advertising, it was a very kind of unique thing which made people want to go to, um, to this particular Dark Hedges, it was called, uh, to go and see it. And in one of the winter storms a couple of years ago, the trees fell, two of the trees fell down. And the Northern Ireland Irish Tourism Board immediately bought the wood. And what they did was they turned those trees into doors. And on those doors, they carved scenes from Game of Thrones. And then they gave those doors to pubs all over Northern Ireland. And they created a pub tour around the province, which then had passports to go with it. You would go and get a stamp if you went into each of the pubs. And they created literally out of fallen trees, a tourism product that was inspired by something that was seen on television. And I think that, you know, for me, this is, this is one of the major opportunities that all of you are really talking about, is how the, the kinds of work that you do can stimulate not only within your own field, but also ongoing tourism. And in fact, one of the things I try and persuade people to do is to build those tourism opportunities themselves. So as a filmmaker, to work more closely with the tourism board to make sure that they are benefiting and therefore you're benefiting as well. What do you need then as, as creative industries, ent entities, businesses, individuals from your local government, from the, what, what, what kind of support is necessary for you to be able to grow your businesses? Anise Lips. Uh, I believe um, our presence here today is particularly interesting. I've never been to another tourism conference where creative industries were included. 
So uh, besides thanking the organizers and uh, congratulating them, if I may, for, the, for their vision, um, I would use this as a starting point of what we're looking to be included. Uh, yes, we request to be included. Yes, we do our part of the work, sometimes better, sometimes not that good. But um, I think it is important for uh, other actors of, of the ecosystem to understand the importance of, of the work that creative industry is doing and the benefit that it can have. On the other hand, um, we were mentioning this a little bit yesterday, I believe culture is has to be grassroots. Can, it cannot be dictated from the top. And um, I believe there's a need to allow for some freedom of expression, freedom of growth. As I said, at least um, business-wise, the context in Albania has uh, changed, and I'm very happy for that. But there's still room to allow for more voices to be um, able to be expressed and then heard. Um, and this is not just for the good of, of the arts. Of course, artists benefit if they're allowed to express themselves, if they're uh, faced with more international tourists. We, we know this in Albania, we had 50 years of not being able to, to face the, the other. And of course, this, this makes art improve and artists grow. But um, it's, it's a vicious circle. It, it, it adds to, to, to the panel what you're offering tourists. And as it was mentioned uh, quite often here today, we, we are quite particular in what we're offering compared to the rest of the world. And we are quite clear, I think, in what kind of tourists we attract. So um, yes, those who come will go to the National History Museum of whatever uh, each of the six countries we're represented here today but they will need to hear the other stories, the more particular, the more unique, the more authentic. And um, we are here for that. We are the ones who, who, who allow for that. And in the end, create this package that I think answers better to the expectations of the tourists that we get in the region rather than one unified official narrative. And I, mean, and I think you're absolutely nail on the head there around the fact that, that humans have connected through millennia, through stories. And the creative industries are where those stories are being told. So this is, you know, it's the most pure form of directly connecting people to people, right? And building that warmth of that relationship that we were sort of discussing about how you, um, you know, it's, n it's how they make you feel. Well, this is how you make you feel. It's, it's a bit of a difficult argument to make though, because it's not tangible. Uh, you're talking about experiences, you're talking about feelings, and sometimes it seems a bit too over the clouds to, to be an argument. But if we're talking about sustainability, social and cultural sustainability are part, are two of the pillars. And we need to consider well-being and integrity of the people who visit and of, of those who are visited in there. And then for those who don't understand, then we add the financial value of, of our work, which is, of course, not secondary, but there is, um, yeah, we're, with artists, it's a bit more about the spirit and the, 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 the emotions, I think. Um, Dushan, any suggestions from you of how, uh, let's just talk within Montenegro at the moment, mm. what you need as filmmakers to bridge the gap more between tourism and creative? Is there anything that springs yeah, to mind? Yeah, not just as a filmmaker, but as someone who comes from a field of art and culture. I believe that uh, in Montenegro particularly, uh, we have to feel invited to participate in our society. To, to uh, Not just that we need money and investments, but we uh, need to, to produce knowledge and to, to educate uh, ourselves in all sorts of fields. Uh, of course, film industry is recognized uh, mostly as entertainment, uh, but there is a very huge part of it that is uh, really producing a knowledge, producing an experience. And uh, when these two uh, things are combined, I, I think that's the, the real value. For example, Sarajevo Film Festival uh, made that success because they, uh, they uh, combined uh, party and entertainment on the one side that is mostly visible to the people, and but on the other side, uh, Sarajevo Film Festival gathers uh, professionals from the region and uh, main voices from cinematography all around the world. 
So uh, basically in that uh, one week or eight days, uh, they're not just having uh, parties, but they actually produce and shape uh, regional cinematography. And then in a, a very important part, uh, European cinematography. Uh, and what comes of it is that it's a major cultural event in the region and uh, it made, I believe, uh, Sarajevo is uh, one of the main touristic destination in the region. And, and, uh, and so obviously we're all here today on with the RCC whose interests are promoting um, regional cooperation, regional activism. Um, do you have, have you noticed any gaps within your own field, generally with the industry, that would allow broader cooperation. I mean, the film industry, I think, is, a, it, you know, absolutely Sarajevo has that central role that it's playing. Yeah, but, but in, fil in film industry, we have this kind of co-productions uh, for the investments, and I believe uh, that in the region we have to have stronger connections between the national film centers and to, to uh, we have to work more easily uh, in this term because uh, I, as a filmmaker, cannot make film just from the Montenegrin money. I, ha uh, I have to apply for the regional uh, national funds and uh, this kind of cooperation really has to be more fluid, I believe. And d I mean, do you think that the model for film funding, co-production, could potentially travel into other sectors like music? Is it, do you see that that's even a possibility there? Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, even in contemporary art, like there is uh, alternative uh, uh, networks throughout the region that cooperate very closely, uh, uh, but I believe on the state level, uh, culture uh, has to be more fluid because we, we uh, cooperate with each other. We, uh, in every field of art, we basically know people and uh, we have uh, similar experiences and similar uh, models of working. So why wouldn't be uh, more easy to, uh, to fund uh, art and culture and our production? I saw a very interesting solution that came. Um, Turkey was attempting to do a co-production treaty with Germany. And they realized that the imbalance between wealth and experience from the two parties was significant and that any co-productions that were arising from this union tended to be very imbalanced with the power sitting, you know, which is not the point of a co-production, it's about you know, genuine partnership. So what they introduced was a co-production development fund for German-Turkish co-productions that uh, literally just allowed people to sit in the room and go, hey, I really like your idea, let's talk about how we could get that made together. And I think that that's something that might work nicely in the region for cultural or creative products generally. Is a, you know, a way to get people from the region together to collaborate about what happens next. Yeah, but basically uh, in the film w we have that because um, every film basically has or cast member or crew members from all over the, 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 the region. So these uh, borders don't exist actually uh, in producing the, the film or TV show and art because I'm very familiar also with uh, contempo uh, contemporary art production uh, in the region. So basically it's the same, always the same experience, but the visibility of all of it miss is something that is missed uh, and of course more uh, uh, funding. And incubators regionally? Absolutely. Um, that's, I think, one of the, the problems of what's happening right now is that there is a lot of initiatives that, that are not connected to, to one another. Um, I wouldn't say what we tried, because we were trying in a really uh, small scale. But in the end of the day, every time you meet someone from the Balkans, you always end up with like sharing the same problems and sharing the same difficulties and um, sharing a lot of our history uh, as well. So, um, and the way forward, as I think everyone here has stated today, is, is together. So, um, and there are also incredible successful examples from, from the region. There's, um, I, I can think now of, of a case from uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina selling uh, their handmade furniture 
traditional methods everywhere in the world. So we don't need to go to Spain to find a successful uh, furniture maker who's selling abroad. We can find someone who's much more closer to us and we can share that experience uh, among each other. And I think that would make it a lot more tangible and real as an example to, to the local um, so artists I, as do well. You, are you saying that there's, there's not a lot of exposure locally to each other's work generally? I, d I'm, I do have some because I actively looked for yeah. it, but otherwise, and social media of course is playing uh, a huge role in that and some of these borders at least electronically uh, have fallen, but uh, no, uh, maybe music a little bit, but that uh, depends. There are some festivals who are trying to include musicians from different countries, but other than that, we don't hear in the radio uh, a musician from Bosnia Herzegovina or Montenegro, Montenegro maybe sometimes. Um, we, we don't know about their uh, arts and uh, we rarely get in the cinemas uh, any production of the neighboring countries. As you said, exposure is uh, still, still in very low levels. So there's a lot of room to, to improve and I think there's a lot of interest but individuals cannot do it together. So there's, there's a need for, for a collaboration in, in a larger scale for sure. If I may add, uh, for example, because I, I was thinking while you were talking, uh, for example, I think Kosovo made good job in, uh, uh, in creating uh, a hub in a film because investing in education and, in, and investing uh, in, in uh, creativity uh, made them uh, last years like four films produced by women directors who had uh, tremendous success uh, throughout the festivals, uh, but uh, people in the region basically don't know that. Uh, they, they won uh, Sundance Film Festival, Rotterdam, uh, they've been in Venice and almost got nominated for, for Oscar, uh, which is for that kind of country, which is small, our smallest country in the region, Besides Montenegro, <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, really really huge huge uh, success, and I think uh, that kind of practi practices should be promoted, and and uh, we should all learn from that. It would be interesting as well to see whether people with this with the ex added exposure of those films in the public realm, um, whether it increases interest to travel there after that. I mean, it often does. It depends on the w how widespread that those screenings are, I suppose. It does. If we take an example of Sarajevo Film Festival, I would say it's one of the biggest regional festivals, and I would point out that it's a core art festival. To make that's why also our idea started from the street art festival. I mean, from Sarajevo Film Festival in order to produce a street art festival. But when I'm, for example, taking people in tours, I see more and more questions about, can you show me the National Theatre where actually Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have been two years in a row? So um, I would make a big bond about the tourism and about the, the festivals as a core point uh, together and to... Do you take people to tours outside of Surrey, outside of... Yeah, um, whole Bosnia. Outside whole Bosnia. Uh, and, but in the region generally, have you looked um, at doing that yet? Mainly that's... Um, in the scope of tourism, we try to stay protected in a way that we would hide like a local tour guide that we're doing today. Okay. So, I mean, we can all learn about uh, right the region around, but usually what we do is we make the transport for the people and then we hire a local okay. uh, local tour guide. Yeah. Okay. And if I may add something, sorry. Uh, it's, it's another of those soft uh, benefits, but uh, sharing more amongst each other as, as countries, as in as a region, I think will also help to completely fade away all the differences that we have through history built uh, between each other and all these fake walls that are not really uh, there. The more we travel, the more we uh, look and watch each other's films and listen to each other's music and know about each other's past crafts and traditions, I think the more we realize that we're very similar and the differences are just to be um, cherished and uh, celebrated rather than um, be used as uh, setting us away from each well other. And we were talking that, you know, whether, I mean, you are young, but for, for the older generation that is used to these barriers and borders, this is my first time in Tirana because for most of my childhood, we just simply couldn't get here. Um, but for the youth today who are moving fast, um, they don't have the patience for, for separation. They want to be joined. And I think it is, you know, again, we provide the 
the platforms, we provide the stories, we provide the opportunities for, um, for reaching out. And I think then it you know, then falls onto tourism to take that forward and help us create more products, help us to, uh, you know, we're, we're helping bringing in new partners. Um, you know, the, one of the benefits of, of this kind of creator is it's completely unseasonal. So people throughout the year are gonna want to come and see you know, creative industry product. It's entirely not based on whether the sun is shining. <laughs> so I think that there's a great deal that um, we can do if we use this as the first step of dialogue um, and go from here and try and create this into something that we do more regularly. Um, I think it's been a very interesting and useful um, entry point for the discussion. So thank you very, very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to wrap it here because I think it's been a long day. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> yes. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, on behalf of the RCC, really, I would like to thank you, Martin, for a very good panel. Of, uh, thank you, Anissa, Dusan, and Max. Um, I think that we all enjoy, and uh, I'm sorry that not so many people was there, but I am very happy that we have a lot of those who are virtually with us. Uh, really very short wrap it up, though, the conclusions of the, uh, of the conference, not going, uh, trying not to repeat what has been said up to now, but definitely uh, if uh, something should go out from or be taken from this conference is definitely the fact that uh, there are huge potentials for the regional cooperation in many areas, that uh, tourism is as one of the fastest growing industries, definitely the area uh, of that type of the cooperation for uh, uh, better cooperation of the region. And that we uh, do have uh, very creative ideas how to do and how to um, uh, actually deal with the improving, especially now, the tourism and the touristic offer uh, of the Western Balkan as the region. But, but, um, and that is the reason why we have such a conferences and exchanges, there are impediments. So there are uh, barriers as we heard, sometimes the barriers are the result of our prejudice. Uh, we did not talk about that, but uh, they exist. Sometimes uh, they are a result of the regulatory issues, and that, that's what we saw uh, that uh, create a huge uh, problem. Some barriers we can remove. We are always bragging about removing roam, uh, roaming uh, in the Western Balkan, but you know it's easier. I was in Brussels yesterday, of course, that I did not switch off the uh, data, um, uh, th this icon on data sharing, because it will cost me an uh, enormous amount of money. But here is like at home. Uh, so it also makes our life uh, uh, easier. Um, the issue of the free movement of people, our mutual recognition of diplomas, of the qualification is extremely uh, important. Uh, as somebody said, I'm not going to quote who said it, but I love it. It's actually, yes, let's be creative, innovative, but do not forget what we know how to do uh, best uh, in terms of the, uh, of the good uh, uh, results. Um, new image of the Western Balkan is needed. If we want to compete with those big, important, and already known uh, markets for touristic offers, uh, actually. So uh, I promise uh, that Ivana, but also Nedima, Alan are going to do uh, a follow-up to something like this. I am grateful, Ivana, uh, for your wonderful work uh, in conveying uh, so many good panelists. Um, then uh, uh, the HR or the capacity matters, and we are grateful that we do have a good cooperation uh, with uh, initiatives in the, um, uh, in the region and wider region in terms of helping building the capacity as well as the digital, digital skills, which are intrinsic part especially 
uh, especially joined it, uh, especially uh, now, sorry. And uh, last not least, responding jointly in timely manner to the crisis. Um, not much has been said today, uh, we have to admit. Um, we would like our ministers that, uh, that participated today or even being online today, discuss about the initiative that is extremely important. This is the Western Balkan crisis, uh, Tourism Crisis Committee. Um, as the pandemic uh, actually show that the problems are the same. And the answer to those problems, especially in the situation of the health danger of the pandemic, but also environmental issues, uh, climate changes and the catastrophes, uh, we can help uh, the best to each other. You know the story of neighbors, the neighbor is the closer than your relative. Uh, at least that is what they say uh, in some parts of, uh, of this region. And that is something, again, uh, uh, to discuss. Um, I'm not going to go uh, further into the detail, but uh, authenticity, if I am good in pronouncing, is the buzzword. Uh, here is the, uh, the answer to your question. Now I have it at the end uh, uh, of the conference and uh, working together and uh, let me reiterate the importance of the common regional market because all of those things, creative industry, uh, tourism as the developing industry, diaspora cooperation, cultural cooperation, film uh, cooperation is also something uh, uh, that we put uh, into the common regional market as the action plan, as the document, which can help us uh, to go further. I am grateful to all of you for your kind participation. Uh, looking forward to see you soon, but before uh, I say goodbye to all of you here and uh, those who are following us uh, virtually, Anissa, in 20 minutes or something? Huh? Let's see, yeah, give somebody, everyone some time to... Uh, for half an hour? Uh, in half an hour we are going to see uh, Anissa was kind enough uh, to help us to see much more of Tirana, not only hotel or <laughs> the uh, conference room, and we are grateful also for this. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see you uh, again. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.